Yo, what is up? I think it's it's day two, but part three technically, of this Witcher MetaHuman project. And Windows, I don't know what's up. Do I need to click on this? What's up with you? Now the bar is down. A talking pineapple. My goodness. Yesterday, we made this metahuman here some clothes kind of and they look like this and we want it to look like this big picture that's that's what we're going for we want game mesh runtime mesh not cinematic not keyframe mesh runtime mesh where'd the tab go but i basically broke out all of the big big shapes the shirt, it's padded. Pants, boots, gloves look terrible. Chest top, top, chest bottom, torso thing. And these are still soup cans up here. And I made the collar. That was like the best part. I also got reference for the swords, which I'll be making. And I bought prop swords for mocap tracking that are pretty damn close. Turns out they make training medieval swords that are very close in dimension to the Witcher swords. And then I found some cosplay patterns for making your own swords and uh, yeah it's all coming together i'm gonna be a professional 3d witcher soon working my way towards it too much topology too much topology too much topology that's what i was realizing here it's like we're not having anywhere near uniform topology at this point that's because i kind of know not much about the shirts and the pants is going to change that's pretty much it even if i sculpt into it I'm going to project it back to something like this because folds are overrated and they make rigging hard and they make things asymmetrical and that's a, it's not worth it at the end of the day when you watch, at least when I watch the mocap demo kind of content I'm making, no one cares about this. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. It's pretty much right here and then just overall silhouette and uh, movement. So simulating stuff like this, not worth, not worth for me. So I think I called this stream something like Thickening, I'm going to thicken these things, start turning these into like proper uh, pieces of armor, or at least base mesh, so, but thickened base mesh for uh, sculpting, detailing. And I was doing that in ZBrush before, but that program is, is awful. ZBrush is awful. I'm going to use it an awful lot, but I, I still stick to my initial feelings on that program. The program is awful. It just doesn't make any damn sense. So I'm going to try not to go there so much. Hey, you need your iPad? Go get it. It's in the cabinet, I think. So I'm going to do that here. So goals for today, because I think it might be shorter than normal, is to start to block out this stuff, make it more 3D, thicker, and look at the straps now, which I'm going to do the straps in Maya, Pretty much all of this is going to be a Maya at the moment. So making these little buckles should be pretty easy and blocking at the belt as well. So they're kind of like kind of getting into details a little bit quick, but uh, the most important part is this right here anyway. And then the buckle details, I, so I need to make them in Z, I need to make them in Maya to use them as insert brushes in ZBrush or, or whatever. They got, they got to get done somewhere. Uh, so yeah, let me see. What, what do we, what do we get start with? I sorted out this. This is why, like, Marvelous and stuff like that, when, when you're coming back to game mesh and trying to keep everything on quads, it's like... Marvelous Designer is, is, like, referenced. And, like, you can trace on it or quadra on it. Or just, like, ZR remesh it or something like that. And you get some, some folds and stuff. But at the end of the day, I, I think for game stuff, it always has to come back into, like, perfect quads anyway. So it's, like... It might just be part of the concept, the concept phase or the, the blocking phase. So, uh, I'm probably going to do this wrong a couple of times. Maybe not. We'll see. I'm going to save as. This, I, I still have not set up a proper Maya project. I refuse. O three. 3 Okie dokie. So, I think I could probably do this in symmetry. Uh, but that sounds kind of confusing, so I'm going to delete this half. Oh my. Actually, yeah, I could do the, delete the whole thing. We'll just flip it back after. So these are like the same mesh. I forget why I did that. Oh, I remember because ZBrush is awful. That's why. So I'm going to extract this one out. 
Do I have a thing for it? It just kind of looks like it. No. Nerbs to polygons. Why is that? Oh, that's for modeling houses. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, this is it, right? Extract. There's like multiple things that sound like extract, but that's the one. History transform. Okay, now these are actually different pieces. So this is the shoulder pads. Pop this stuff out. It's going to be worth cleaning this up soon, just cleaning all these things. It's, I've been going back and forth from ZBrush back and forth to get these base shapes done. I'm pretty happy with them. I like I like this one especially. To have quote unquote hand modeled this one, that's 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 impressive to me. I like I like it. This is uh I don't know. I came out I came out nice. I'm getting better. So this, yeah, so what we're gonna do I regret some of the tapering, but I'm gonna get just go with this shape at this point. These are basically symmetrical. These are basically symmetrical. And then the little strappies on the inside, which I am going to make, they're also symmetrical. So I'm just going to do this whole thing symmetrical. And then at the end, this right shoulder pad has a little bit of additional detail. That's it. So it's pretty much a, 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 a symmetrical exercise here. So this piece of armor just has a, a leather row of polygons like this. The inside is chainmail. I was gonna 3D model the chainmail in ZBrush with micro mesh, but I'm gonna just do it with texture because that's what it, we would do anyway. So I can take this, I suppose. Actually, I want to keep it in view of the human because, like, that's it, it's. Oh, what the? There's no skeleton. How come that happened? But okay, that's fine. Um, should I center pivot? Does that stuff matter here? All that matters with this type of an operation, I'm about to start extruding and stuff, is that it's scaled at one, yeah, because otherwise the, it just gets funny. So everything has to be scaled, transformed. So let's see how this handles a extruder bevel. I think it's an extrude. We're going to offset in. Oh, that's bad. That's super bad. I wonder what's going on here then. Keep faces together. Okay, so this has me a little bit concerned. How about this? Okay, so that's not how you would inset that edge, apparently. I thought for some reason I would be able to like inset that, but that's maybe if it was all one polygon. Well, I'll do it with insert edge loop instead. It's just not gonna be as even, but... Luckily this stuff is... What's it called? It, where is it, this one? It's leather, so it doesn't have to be like a perfect border. I was going to try to get all four of these at once using offset, but I think that's more if it's just one face. But this is leather, so it can be kind of uh, kind of wonky in different sizes. It's not made out of like machined metal. Okay, so the question is like how thick is this border? And there's tapering, so this is smaller than that, and it does kind of throw it off a little bit. But it's pretty, it's about right, something like that. This might be like overall a little bit bigger. But that's pretty much the character, in my opinion. It's very much like how big are these shoulder pads relative to him, his like body size. And then how thick are the details, right? Like if the details are small, it's like a little bit more realistic, I, f I think. If they're big and chunky, it's like World of Warcraft. So we're kind of kind of finding that, that line. I'm kind of okay with that. That's like what it came to like originally. What's up, uh, Dania, Toby? Uh, have you seen the latest update for the free marketplace stuff? Yeah. I check the Unreal Engine marketplace like three times a day. <laughs> it's like, it's one of the places I go. So yeah, I see that. Oh yeah, I, I saw the med medieval stuff. I hope that I can uh, author stuff like that myself. Uh, over time, it's gonna take me a while to get to as good as those uh, whoever created that stuff is. But that's kind of my goal. I'm like, you know, I, I saw it before 2022, but like, kind of like looking into the the future of like what, you know, I'm gonna need and be able to do. Uh, that would be valuable that I can't really get anyone else to do for me. Is uh, custom outfits. Now environments, environments is like pretty easy at this point, like it's sourceable. But I've had nothing but trouble trying to get clothing made. So thus the investment of time into this. 
And I like it. There's that too. If I didn't like this, then, you know, wouldn't be worth it. So giving these a bit of an extrude. It's not metal. It's not like, you know, knight armor. It's just a little bit of uh, thickness here. And so this is also... The th the, basically, like, the thinner this is, the more realistic, right? Like, that's too much, right? Like, I, this is kind of like metahuman world here. We're trying to... I'm trying to go a little bit realistic, which is why I kind of like the medieval Witcher metaverse situation. Uh, is because it, it, it just, like, it looks reasonable. It looks like a lot of the armor he wears, it feels like you could actually wear. And then that tends to work out pretty well for the metahumans. So we're looking at piping like that. Um... It's going to get smooth, so I pulled it up like a little bit more. But yeah, that, medi that medieval stuff looks good, but it won't fit a metahuman. And then I didn't create it. So long term, there's some stuff coming up with Unreal Engine 5 and how cloth works and stuff like that, where like you have to author it a very specific way or it doesn't work. And then I'm going to be control rigging a lot of it too. So you need to rig it to the skeleton correctly. So. That stuff is a good mesh, but you can't just like throw it on to a metahuman and start using it. Have you been to the Vive Tracker stuff? Um, no, it's just on hold right now. I have all the Tundra trackers. I have everything set up to kind of continue work on that, but it's just not the priority right now, considering how incredibly well the Vicon stuff works. I just don't really have a need for. Uh, pushing it yet. but when I quote unquote finish or get to like version one of like the next kind of like software thing I'm writing um n n it's pretty safe to say no one will have a Vicon for that so they're going to need their version of it and at that point I'll start writing the uh I'll start writing the the Vive version of it maybe it really kind of depends on what Steam VR is going to do. Like, I really, really want to see what Valve is going to put out into the world before I go too far uh, in that direction. Because they might completely uh, just dis like end that ecosystem, which I could see. They might just be like, yeah, that was a cool time. We don't do that anymore. So I'm kind of seeing like who wins the, like what tech stack makes the most sense for like consumer, prosumer, uh, full body tracking. For high end, I know who wins. It's 100% Vicon. There's, the, there's not even close to competition at this point. Like I can, conf I can pretty confidently say that without trying to burn any bridges or anything like that. But uh, no one even comes like remotely close. It's not even, it's not even the same universe. Oh no, but until then I'm just arting around. The popping of fabric nodes is a tough one to solve. Um, I mean, the the I talked to briefly um, Luke who who creates the uh, the tundra trackers, and he 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 knows quite a bit about this too. But it it's the main thing is that like Steam VR is not a very good platform for building mocap it just doesn't have the things it doesn't prioritize the things we need to make stable body solves keyword being stable like it's very jumpy but uh all the logic we're gonna need to build full body solves like real-time body solves is i should probably have like written down how thick i made this but whatever oh oops i missed a row all that's gonna be in unreal engine 5 control rig not today, but like the team building that stuff is, uh, you know, that's basically what they do at runtime. That's a lot of that stuff is how those the matrix demo works, like how those animations are being changed. What the fuck? Oh, hold on, I already extruded it. I already activated the tool. There we go. So there's going to be runtime retargeting multiple versions of it, hopefully controllable runtime retargeting plus control rig and we'll be able to write some pretty pretty amazing stuff. Uh, and then it just comes down to like, what do we want to, like, how do we want to feed the primary solve, which could be from like, you know, seven point, wait, thickness? 
Am I doing translate? It's been working actually. It could be from Steam VR, VR mocap. You know, seven to twelve, seven to sixteen point tracking from that. It could be from video. It could be like a first pass video AI solver. Is that really what happens back here? Um, hmm. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, it pulls them out. Uh, this will have to have thickness. Uh, let me pull back out here. I think these are like a. Nah, that's pretty close, and I'm not trying to make it like perfect. Uh, perfect. But yeah, so that's that's kind of like the next step with this one to start to add that in there. All right, so that's kind of a thick piece now. Yeah, it has thickness, quote unquote. It's not a plane, so that starts to fill out. And I'm gonna treat this as one piece. I feel like if I really, I feel like it's really two. But the way I'm gonna bind this to the upper arm is this gets bound directly to the uh, helper bone up here. Let's see, ALS four. But I bet you there's gonna be a. Uh... Much better than the locomotion system for other I bet you there's gonna be um but there's gonna be a better version than ALS four. ALS four is pretty old at this point. It works, but um you know that developer works at Epic now and uh I bet you there's gonna be a better one pretty soon. And Echo was kind of like them, like if you've opened the Echo blueprint and like tried to use it. I would rather the direction that that's moving than ALS. ALS is like kind of ALS was conceived before control rig and, and the retargeting systems that are being built in, so uh, I wouldn't use ALS for it, unless you're like shipping today or something like or very soon. I think there's going to be a much, much better version of it. I'm going to connect that one here right in half. So we'll stay about this resolution before we go any further. Uh, if I If I convert this into like gated sub D model, this will be ready to go to ZBrush and then we can start sculpting the details. But pretty much this is what the base mesh will look like going back into Unreal Engine. Maybe with like a little bit more detail, but as blocky and crazy as this looks, once you bake the normal maps onto it from the high poly, this stuff feels pretty leathery uh, without having to even add bevels or anything like that. Because bevels are going to make problems for rigging. So I, I am keeping this like pretty game mesh, but It'll, it'll appear pretty good, I think. So yeah, true to the name of this segment, it's now thick. And you can do that. You can, There's all sorts of cute ways of piping. I call that piping. There's a lot of cute ways of piping in ZBrush. They're all awful. They're all absolute garbage. Like if you're, when you're doing this, it should be done in a proper DCC where you have like real control, real quads. That's, that's pretty much my position moving forward with this. Uh, I really, unless it's like pure soft, like organic, like a character, you you should do the you shouldn't even you shouldn't even try to do it in ZBrush. It's, so, it's such a bad such a bad system for that stuff. And these were kind of I I think I'm gonna quad draw these two. Like if it's just a poly strip at the end of the day, the quad draw tool is better than that topology tool for what I'm doing. Like I, I think for, again for like ZBrush really like super excels at like creature design and stuff like that. But I I think it's I think it's really I guess it's nice that you can do hard surface stuff in ZBrush and there's like certain things that are easier, but I, I still think if we're going for low poly game models that you should just do it at max or Maya. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Trust me, there's a lot of companies trying to make full body tracking a reality. It's not going to be hard um, for the consumer, for the developers, we're going to have to figure this out, but like it, it, it'll come and it'll just be choosing which hardware ecosystem you want to live in, really. It's probably going to be Facebook, let's be real. It's probably going to be Meta. Do I work at Epic? No, I don't work with Ep at Epic, no. But, um, less these days with COVID, but I used to do like a lot of events with them and stuff like that and some projects. So I, I've, I do work with, like with them directly quite a bit, but less these days. So I think the next thing I want to start moving on to is this chest. And again, it's better to plan the low poly here. So this this thing has two details that I really like, and they're a big part of the reason I chose this project is um, has a collar with piping, which I haven't added yet. Uh, but I like the collar. And he's got kind of like Batman 
chest pec muscles on the suit. So that could probably be baked in from the high poly. We don't have to model it, but I might like suggest it. And I like these two straps. So I'm going to make these straps now and the buckle. And uh, the buckle and straps can then become insert mesh brushes or tripart Z brush brushes, but those are kind of awful. <laughs> I think they kind of suck. I, I'd almost rather just use splines and extrusions from Maya. It's just so hard to control them. So maybe once I'm in like a year, you know, I'll be more confident in ZBrush, but make these little strappy details for now before I thicken the body piece. But we're, we're, on, we're on the road to basically thickening all these pieces um, into perfect sub D models so that they'll subdivide in ZBrush. And, um, Definitely not today. I don't even know if I'll finish. I probably won't even finish doing that today. And I need to retopologize the gloves. But uh, next phase would then be to take those into ZBrush, all thickened, all hold out, subdivide, sculpt, and um, yeah, that'll, that'll take a while too. <laughs> That's going to take a long time. Why didn't you use Marvelous Designer for the clothes instead of ZBrush? Uh, Marvelous Designer is kind of unnecessary for stuff like this. What's up, original? How's it going? Uh, I've gotten Mega Grant. It wasn't for this project, though, but it's kind of just like... I kind of I kind of do what's interesting, or what I think is going to be useful. Uh, Marvelous Designer is kind of a problem, in my opinion, when it comes to game meshes, because it uh, it simulates the cloth in places you don't want. So it becomes a big issue in the crotch area. Like say this was a simulated piece of clothing. It's very likely that the clothing is going to fall to one side or the other, right? Almost impossible for it to simulate straight down. That's a problem with rigging later. Uh, it can be solved, but it's a problem. So it would be better to do extracts and have it be skin tight and perfectly symmetrical for rigging. Same thing with the arms, same things with the armpits. Same thing with these gloves. Like you could definitely marvelous design of these but why, you know, unless you're going high poly, like only high poly, then it would be kind of like, kind of makes sense. But um, it's currently my stance for at least these outfits specifically. Like if the outfit was like a robe with a hood and like lots of fluffy stuff, like lots of like flappy cloth, then yeah, I would be able, I'd consider it, but I think I might still do it in ZBrush anyway. But this outfit that's basically pretty much a skin tight outfit, you, you're just like hurting yourself. But you can use whatever you want. You could you could use, you know, whatever. So this guy has Batman chest situation. So that's pretty much like I I I'm I'm almost positive it doesn't affect this like the only time if you're trying to stay performant, like and for rigging, the idea is that you only add low poly topology for details like that if it would show up on the side, like this. So like the question is, when you look at Geralt's armor from here, does that affect the, affect the silhouette? And it would here, possibly. Like, this comes out and then comes down. That's the only time you start to add topology to this. So it definitely could be that, like, this row here pops out. That there are... I could probably scoot these around to be a little bit closer. But there could also be another row here. But what we don't really want to do is to affect this. I already sorted out this topology up here. It's going to pipe nicely. It's going to subdivide nicely like this. That's what it looked like in ZBrush. A little bit of pulling, but you know, I'm not going to do the thing like in Marvelous where you like strip this down the middle. Even though, does this open down the middle? No, it doesn't. No. I was going to say, if this opened like a shirt, we would uh, have a seam in here, which we would either high poly bake like a sculpted seam, or we could basically extrude like a bevel this edge here or something like that but it might be worth have i duplicated this yet i think i'm going to now i need to name this but i'm going to start to kind of move this towards a thickened hulled version of itself and then add the straps to it blast me regarding the <laughs> use whatever tool you want I i'm i'm just saying like from how i work and how i think that's just where i'm at with it I'm not, you know, but like my opinion on this stuff is malleable. Like it, it changes. Okay, so let's go into half mode. 
I think it comes down to where you can get it done. Can you get it done in Marvelous? And get that all the way back to a game mesh rigged to a skeleton? Then great, do it in Marvelous. If you're better at doing that in ZBrush, then do it in ZBrush. You know, but for just for me personally, I, I know I, my career started in Maya. Like I used to make Maya plugins. And the previous industry, which I am tangential to, operates a hundred percent in Maya. There's no other program. You don't. You don't even. There's not even a, a consideration. There's no conversation to be had about what program this happens in. It's Maya. And Unreal Engine Epic Games itself is also a Maya studio. At the end of the day. So I just tend to come back to this program quite a bit. All the MetaHuman support tools, they're almost one hundred percent written in Maya. Python. So we have, again, we're only coming into this to affect this silhouette that, okay, about here, if we looked at it from the side, the like kind of Batman chest popping out thing would be around here. Now this phase, even moving around these little verts here, ZBrush wins for that. Like ZBrush is much better than how I'm doing it. Like I'm not moving screen space, I'm moving world space. So. What's happening is, as I fix one angle, it breaks another angle, and that's 3D modeling, basically. <laughs> that's like what happens. Um, but if I pull this up a little bit, right, we're starting to suggest this kind of like a chest piece there. And we'll be, the full execution will happen in ZBrush to actually pull out that detail. And when you look at the baked version in, in Unreal Engine later, it'll look like that. It's just, I'm just starting to suggest it with the topology here like that. So I'm going to just leave it here. This should be fine. And I mirror. And then we merge. That one. Okay, so now it has a little bit of uh, suggestion of this like kind of like breastplate thing. Might be a little bit lower on the real version. But um, the topology is kind of there. Yeah, I feel like it was probably one sub blower actually. We'll see, we'll see. This this is not final topology, this is base topology. Well, I'm, but still thinking about how it will subdivide and also can, with the consideration definitely of like, you know, what's this gonna look like game mesh down the road? What would that be? But uh, this is just a mesh to send to ZBrush that will have proper subdivisions and whatnot. When we ZR remesh this, we got something kind of crazy. So I had to come and fix it here. So I am going to think about um, how we want to thicken this, right? So the ZBrush way that's the most efficient is to cap the edge. You just cap them like this. You just say fill hole and then you extrude in. And if you actually look at the Witcher armor, I've been playing it every day now. That's what they did in game. So you can actually from certain angles see that a mesh like this, if you took his head off, is actually like a capped version with an extrude down. And you can see that in a lot of their armor. It's um, it's definitely an efficient way to do it. So like the final in-game poly mesh could be like that, where you would cap this and extrude it in. Uh, those caps kind of weird. You have to kind of like UV them out of, into nothing, and then uh, rigging wise, I feel like they're a liability that the the cap could like pop out the back or something. But um, I, I think that's how they actually finished a lot of the Witcher Three armor too, as far as thickness. But at this point, I'm going for uh, ZBrush. That's all that matters. So I like the idea of making this part actually like thicker leather. So I'm just going to extrude this. And this is a lot of the reason that I went and remodeled this is so that I'd have this edge loop like that. And I'm going to do one down there too. So we're going to do extrude piping for this one. And then I'll gate it for subdivisions after. Uh, so if you're in a game that ZBrush is the go-to application designed close for game characters compared to Marvelous. Yeah. I mean... In the order of like importance, it is for me, Maya, the most important, then ZBrush. These are kind of to get, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Maya and Substance Painter. This is all you really need, right? And this could also be Blender and Substance Painter if you like Blender better, that's fine. Uh, I could write, I, I, could, it, I could easily make like a, a snappy 12 minute video on why this is much more worth your time than kind of wasting your time in Blender. But uh, these two programs are, are the mandatory 
This is extra if you like sculpting better than polymodeling and marvelous only if you're doing like floppy clothes and if you know how to get it back into Maya and then back into ZBrush. But this, this introduces a lot of workflow issues. It tricks you into thinking you're going to get gay mesh out of it and then you don't. You really don't at all. You have to do a couple processing tricks and there's a lot of videos showing how to do it but it's 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 like extra work so your your concept needs to really be like kind of uh uh like difficult like you couldn't clock you couldn't poly model it you couldn't sculpt it which there, there definitely are some situations like that for uh what's it called there's definitely some things that they're easier to cloth than than they are to actually model but you're going to have to eventually retopple them and you're going to have to get them back into quads to sculpt them and a bunch of other stuff that has to happen. So if I extrude this edge, now ZBrush has a really cute tool for this that I'm not sure we have in Maya called Extrude and Move. How's this going? Okay, so that's that's not it. Let's look at Z. Yeah. Is it offset? Oh, it's kind of offset. Okay, so this is basically what extruded move is doing in ZBrush, but in Maya. Hey, what's up? I made these for you. Oh, thank you. We have a nice, we have a nice place to hang these too. Plays toys. We did recently, didn't we? Does it say Genshin Impact? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. You love. Is that Chick-fil-A? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we got to get some Chick-fil-A. Sometimes he is... Funny. Funny. Only sometimes, though. I can't. Got, you got iPads for Christmas? It's true. <laughs> this, is, this is like life-altering purchase. <laughs> he plays... Minecraft. Ah, Minecraft. That's true. Oh, very cool. Thank you. Yeah, we, we're going to tack those on there later, huh? Thank you, Shoshi. Um, oh, cool. Oh, good reading. Yeah, yeah. Did Amadou go? Is he good? Oh, good. And he, like, chose to, she said that he didn't have to write. He, like, took the notebook and wrote a whole page about it. Yeah, I told Daddy, him to. Where can I leave it? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can leave it on, uh, let's leave it here, and I'll tack it on the on the door later, okay? Okay. Thanks, Shush. Oh, okay. So I am entering the foot. See you guys. Bye. Bye. I think if I'm building my first project with Unreal as a solo dev, I should start with four or five. <sighs> yeah, that's the question. <laughs> as someone, I'm, I'm kind of doing the same thing, that decision. I would go with five. I would go with five from, a, from like one, it's the future, four is done, unless you're in virtual production you'll never see four again <laughs> unless you're like unless you're a studio already using four it's it's not even you're not gonna you're not gonna really use it i don't think uh and then i think from a lighting point of view you have a lot of nice options it's easier depends what platform you're targeting and all the new control rig to all the new tech is going to be in five and you'll never get it in four unless you know how to do like um pull five libraries back to four. I know some game studios do that, but that's, that, I don't think that's solo dev stuff. That's like, that's really high end. I would go for five, embrace the future. Uh, and then from a marketing point of view as well, you can say this is an Unreal Engine 5 game, which will, which it does mean something. So we're kind of doing this. This would kind of work, something like that for thickness. And the arm will basically always cover the fact that this isn't fully thick. But what you don't want is to look at it from a certain angle and you see into the empty cavity of the mesh. So this is what, this is one way to approach the thickness of this thing. We'll see how it goes. So we'll have to flip it. I can kind of see where my low poly modeling has been sloppy but it'll be okay. And we could come clean up, we could come clean this up too. But ZBrush has a, I like the ZBrush tool for that. It's kind of like each program is just a different tool. It has different 
cute ways of moving vertices around. That's all we're at the end of the day. That's all we're doing. We're just moving these verts around. So it's like, which one's the more intuitive one. And for me, I like to do it in a way that like, which one is the most procedural where I'm not just like moving one vert at a time. And then I lose that operation to time. Basically, we're like, I can make this smooth, and that's not baked into it. I can go back, right? There's like this proceduralness to it. ZBrush has a lot of those kind of operations with smoothing and rebuilding subdivisions, and uh, or Maya doesn't. Like, you don't really, we don't have very many parametric operations here, other than like basically this, which is helpful. I mean, that's pretty much all that matters. Like that. I guess I'm putting the piping in there. Versus in ZBrush, I would have added thickness or done edge loops and then smooth. It's just, the, I think that technique's garbage, having done it multiple times. And it's part of the reason I took offline my, I made like some knight armor doing it like the ZBrush way. That's just oh, fucking awful. So this loop exists for the same reason. Same thing. And so I had to retopologize this thing or else I would never get edge loops properly. So these might be a little thick. Um, but we won't know, well, I mean, I do know. Hold on. I think that's okay. This lower one, I wanted to be like a little chiller. But that's pretty much it. I don't know if I'm going to have to. I probably am. So same idea here. This can be altered in the final game mesh. But my take on thickness is, ooh, it's, is it going to break symmetry? Well, whatever. I'll, I'll resymmetry. I'll make it symmetrical after. I'm just going to bring these in. That's the wrong way. We want to go offset. Oh, offset is it. I think if I had, I'm going to delete this edge and do it again with pure offset. Though insetting it, I think it would offset and then inset in after. Um, you could also just cap it. Like if this, you could pull it to here and then cap it at this point. And this will kind of help um, the kind of Barbie doll construction of how these go together. Like not seeing into the empty mesh of the of the body like this like you don't want to do this you don't want to look into the the back side of the faces if you can avoid it there's certain things like the inside of a sleeve and depending on how you do the topology of the collar you're always kind of looking at the back side but i think that's pretty good i'm gonna try redoing this as a pure offset see if it's better this is less see like this thing's like a perfect cylinder down here this one's kind of like a uh, like it comes out and then in and in then so it's like it may not offset cleanly but just the the arm holes, not a cylinder. Like a planar cylinder. So I'm gonna try extrude edge and just do offset. Is that better? Oh uh, yeah, that's a little cleaner. I think I was like fucking around with all these. Yeah, that's that's a little better. That should be fine too. We don't really intend to ever see this edge though. It's just kind of like a holder. But it's uh, it's really helpful, especially for sculpting. Okay, so this collar also a. Hey. What's up with this? We we'll have to hit F. Um, this collar also has piping on it, and it basically just shows up as a reflection. It's it's pretty much all it is, and it's a bit of a silhouette breakup. It's not just flat; it makes it a little bit more of a believable space or piece. So, ooh, that's actually a thing. So I guess that's what this loop was for. And now I'm actually kind of rethinking that, like, this works out for... This works out decent for this color topology. But now I kind of want this loop actually to come down and go in. Like, so it loops all the way through here clean. Like, this loops all the way back around. I'm actually thinking this should probably loop down to here and go like this, so then I could extrude this pipe. Um, like, I don't know what's going to happen if I extrude this piece like that. Kind of see. So what if I take this? Collars is still something I'm working through, which is why I liked this armor. I was like, okay, this thing has a collar on it, so let's see if we can actually end with a proper collar through the entire thing, too, not just like the uh, not just the high poly, but like end up with a low poly one that's good. So offset, okay, yeah, we're in a funny world here. Okay, so that's not in this case. What's thickness doing this one? Ah, I see. It's kind of this. Like, this would be, like, kind of how a thick collar should work. This is still pretty viable. Like, this is the thickness of the leather collar up here. I have to be careful not to clip into the neck too hard, but again, we're not, this is the sculpting phase, so whatever. 
that works pretty well. And then you do see this. So this is this is something I've been trying to sort out how to how to fix the back side of this. So I guess technically I could again. I think offset goes down in this case. Okay, no, it, it doesn't. I don't know how this works. There we go. This this way kind of for the back of the collar. The front of the collar though is going to need to have. Eh, it's not bad actually. It's not terrible. The fuck? Okay, there we go. Yeah, like we'll never see this, but what what axis are we living on here? Is this world? Object. Oh, okay. Let's just go back to world for now. This never gets seen, but it just feels kind of icky to have it so fucked up like that back there. So this this should mean that I don't have to make this collar two sided, and it has like proper geometry on it. So even for like I'm gonna come in like one of the next projects I'm gonna do is to like to, to design a suit. I'm still probably gonna do it here. I might base it overall in uh in marvelous like a passive marvelous designer and then zbrush but it all comes back down to this like designing these polygons for the games anyway i, I think even for vfx it's still like uh, you still gotta come back and do this okay so that's that's thickness for it for this piece pretty much Oh, there's something going on. No, nah, that's just a drawing error. What's this? Oh, I see. I just didn't get that piece. We'll see if we're on the border. I don't think I... I everything should have a clean border uh, in the symmetry edge. This needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But uh, let's test that. Mirror. Apply. Looks okay. Oh, no. I see a, kind of a funny vert in there. We'll see. Oh no, it's a drawing error. It's fine. And then like the real sus area is gonna be like right here. Where this all pulls together. That's fine. That's fine too. Okay. No, everything stayed on the zero. I tried to not to move it in a way that would have been bad. That would have broken it. Okay. So uh, if we preview what ZBrush smoothing will look like, it's like this, and so we're losing too much mass. I actually like how this, almost with no edges, is just like this subtle little like rounded, and then we'll Damien standard tool through here. Oops. But the collar wants some holds on it, so this edge is weird that it exists. I'm not sure what this, what the idea was with this one. Um. But we want to hold this as like a solid a solid piece. I, you have to be an object mode for this. So oh my god. Oh what the fuck? How come that's not an edge? Oh that's a problem. Oh hold on. Um one second. You have to control backspace in this program, right? It's like control backspace or else there's a poly unless that it leaves the verts, I forget. I could connect this uh this loop. Yeah, I could just do a connect and slide, or I should be able to edge loop through this. Damn it. So this is what I like about subdivision surface modeling is that it's it's kind of uh, parametric. Like you could come and delete this edge and it won't it won't change anything about the core topology. Holding this, I hope maybe that's enough to hold it. That's gonna get pretty round. But the edge we really wanna hold is right here. Oh, okay, I see. Never mind, that's gonna Hold the whole loop. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have looped it the whole way around it well. That is what happened though. This one should be a normal loop. It can be a little softer. And I think on the top we only need one. Like that. So that'll just kind of hold that shape a little bit better. So this is all prepping for, for ZBrush basically. Yeah, so the collar now has a nice kind of like little thickness but a little round it's not exactly metal actually it's a little bit hard i would say it may not even need this top edge so control backspace and again this is like the proceduralness of this this style of modeling is nice maybe we let it go even rounder yeah i think that's okay i think we don't even need that top edge because then it, this is supposed to be leather 
and we're going to come kind of sculpt into this later but uh basically you you want like as a nice as close to the mesh as you can get like the final mesh uh as a base object and so the cleaner this phase the better your sculpting will be otherwise like when you pipe stuff by hand it gets all like wobbly and gross kind of like when i the last piece i did i tried to do it in zbrush and it didn't come out so well if i did this really right there's probably a pretty minimal way of adding this kind of like chest detail in this but that's i'm gonna leave that for the projection and we'll have a little i'll just try to kind of loosely stick to this silhouette there this is also very likely once i come back i can delete out these holding edges and this is probably the topology of the base mesh going into the game so i'll have to rig this which will be uh interesting with the new with the new metahuman skeleton how that will go okay so that's thickening this so this is thick this is thick this one needs to have some edges added to it it's not ready to go to zebra ship but all right we see that but this gets covered mostly but we still there might be certain angles again where you kind of it should be, you know, for all intents and purposes, it should be very dark under here. So you shouldn't really see it, but, you know, it'll hold it there. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the UVs for that yet, but we'll see. Now, where did I put these screenshots? I found a screenshot. Oh, from a, it was like from like a McFarland toy. Damn it. Where did I put those? What computer was that on? Oh, well, I had this nice picture from like a McFarland toy of um they had the witch's arms up and then you kind of saw like what their 3d modelers did as far as um the shoulder plates under the armor so it was one artist's take you know on, on how to how to design that because it's kind of not shown in the game and these are the swords these are pretty easy i'm not going to do the double backed stuff or the twisted i'm just gonna i just want the silhouettes to be right and these are, I just bought like prop swords. These are like generally 40, ooh, is it 40 inches? Must have been. I think these are 40 inches from like end of the pommel to uh, end of the sword. So this one's like a little longer, but basically, basically 40 inches. And I have like a very close to real world prop sword for it too that I'll track uh, later. Okay, so let's see. So that's, this one will go to ZBrush like fine. Like if I hit three, that's what it'll look like. And start to oh it's a little bit soft a little bit round so i might come shape this a little bit like it's a little too sh i feel like it's a little bit more pointed but round but that'll look pretty nice this armhole again it's just like one filling technique for it but overall you don't see it so it should be fine so the next thing before i detail this one is the straps yeah that's that's kind of want to so i, I kind of need this for my like library moving forward anyway is some buckles and straps and let's see here i've never i've never okay why does this happen i've never modeled a belt just never had to but it's basically they call them d-rings right it's basically like a d-ring with a little thing popping like one cylinder popping through and so these base meshes are like the in-game mesh and they just have to be modeled in a way that they'll subdivide I mean, it doesn't even matter. Do I, I'm not going to sculpt the, the D-Rig, I don't think. And they're just going to go on all the metal stuff just goes into one section of the material and I'll just get like a procedural like uh, metal from Substance Painter. So like r really it's like this is the game model and it just has to subdivide into the high poly uh, to kind of smooth out the normals when you bake them. Uh... Oh, it's missing the shoulder pad. That's why it looks kind of funny. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this view is very helpful. And I'm going to save as because it's Maya. I've not corrupted a Maya MLT file, but I have corrupted many Maya ASCII and binary files in my days where they just don't open after. Especially when you start to use plugins. I'm all stock at the moment to avoid that kind of stuff. But once you start implementing third-party plugins that are like, from like an old version or something and something gets screwed up and it corrupts the whole file. I need the straps here. Uh, and to kind of get their proportions correctly, I'm going to re-mirror these so that I can stay in bounds, so to speak. So for now, I'll just recombine these. History, transform, mirror. 
that's fine. So just so I can kind of like draw them here. Okay, so we've got, did we go thicker? How come this one pops out now? I feel like we must have gone thicker somewhere. So this is where I really need ZBrush because like the way you want to move that is on edge normal out. Uh, and there's probably a way to get there, but it's kind of a pain in the, there we go, it's component. Yeah, so we want to pull out like that. It's actually pretty easy, it's just component. It's just this tool thing is like hidden up here. It's not like a nice big, I could write a melt, I could write a UI script that puts this in like into icons and then dock it like in here. I'm probably going to be doing enough Maya work that I can start getting back into like writing Maya, Maya plugins. That's kind of a, I'd rather not spend my time there. I'd rather do all my programming in Unreal, but I might need some like Maya support tools. It's just basically Python and Mel. You just echo it into a window and then copy and paste it into buttons and then make a little PyQt GUI for it. Yeah, I think it was a mistake how much I even... Let's see how what this one's going to do. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, that did it right. Components, excellent. Components kind of like how ZBrush always works. In it. Well, that's not true. ZBrush is like screen space the whole time. But this component move is actually really nice. Ooh, I like this. Yeah, fuck ZBrush. <laughs> this program's awful. Though I, I have these normals because of ZBrush's topology tool. Or whatever. These... these these vertices have their orientation because of the topology tool. So, I mean, I guess it's a group effort. I just feel really, I don't like the fact that in ZBrush you can't just like grab a vert and move it. Not easily anyway. Whereas in here, this is going quite, in the, ooh, this normal though. Eh, it's pretty good, it's fine. Yeah, like I was, I was had a hard time getting this thing back into Back into squares and ZBrush. Here it's pretty easy. But ZBrush gave me the base for this. Oh, I lost the, the, the feel of it. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. But the idea, I'm, I don't know why I'm doing the straps right now. I guess the straps kind of inform where the, uh, where the little straps are going to be. But the idea is to come back and redo this so that everything's like a square. Everything's kind of rectangly at this point, and then they get a little bit like. Eh, A little funny. And so this this design phase of these belt straps happens right now, right here in these things. Once you high poly and sculpt it, it's it's you can move to it, but it's kind of doesn't doesn't work, doesn't look as nice. So I need a belt buckle here, or it's like a, a belt strap that connects the top of the thing, and then I think there's one under it too, like here. Yeah. So I'll make the D-ring, I guess, real quick. So what is a D-ring? What's going to be the easiest way to make that? It's a cylinder, but really it's a cube. It could just be a cube. There's no point in extruding. My extrude tools are really annoying. Like, they're not flexible. You have to hit the axis perfectly, like, or it doesn't work. And I, I don't usually hit it right. It takes me a long time to get it right. So we'll just do this. Control-1, though, yeah? Okay. So, D-ring. So it's straight curve, like that, and symmetrical on just one axis. So, we could do this to here. So we'll just build half of it and mirror it. Let's go front. We'll rescale it later. So it comes up. So we're just gonna go whoop like that. Uh, edge, connect. Oh, component mode. No, no. Let's go back to world. Back up here. What? Okay, hold on. I screwed this up. Oh, I'm grabbing edges. I'm an idiot. Okay, hold on. we gotta grab the face. There we go. So, am I gonna spin it or am I gonna extrude it? Uh. There's probably a nice, there's like a, probably a procedural way of doing this. The real way would be to do it in pure spline and then extrude across it. And then we'd have like a parametric amount of curve versus hand modeling the curve and just never looks right. But this is a pretty small object. So if I just curve it down this way. Yeah, I, I should probably turn it myself. So I'll just turn it like this. 
but if we wanted like proper construction, we'd, we'd use a spline. Yeah, and then I'll just hand model the curve back in. It should be fine. Yeah, that's it. We'll just we'll keep it. Ooh, we'll keep it simple, and I'll just try to hand model this stuff back in. But we don't have like an actual nice like extrusion curve thing. Connect, and then we're gonna lose this tangency like immediately. Yeah, awful. But this comes back in, and like these are probably different angles and stuff like that. But it's a pretty small buckle, though. There is a big one that's like on his belt. That's the one, because like this is gonna be the same. These are gonna be the same. These are all gonna be the same asset, probably. They're just scaled, which I imagine that's what they've done too. So it does eventually get that big. So we don't want it to be like too awful. We're doing this part here. It's pretty round, actually. It's like almost like a circle on this part. It's kind of something to keep in mind. So this curve kind of happens. I probably should be looking at more reference when I'm doing this. It's kind of more like. I should have just done this from the spline. It'd be easier at this point. Is that right? It's something like this. Definitely if we lose the, because I think what happens is this starts to push in, but not on that axis, only on this one. I should have just done this from the spline. And then I could procedurally do the thickness and stuff like that. I'm just kind of like in a hand poly mode right now. I don't want to have to do too much like learning. I could build it in Cinema 4D much faster. Their spine tools are really like intuitive. Okay, so I'll pull this one back out. There's no point in having it oriented there. Just gonna yeah, so you have to the hand add the thickness and then it's very easy to have a look wobbly. When it shouldn't be, when this is like kind of like a machine part. Okay, well, let's look at the mirroring of it. And it's something like that. And I'll try to get it to be game res. And then uh, kind of gate it up and get it ready for ZBrush. Okay, so we'll take this one and it's a flip into negative Y. Y negative flip. It's not welded, but it doesn't we'll weld it after. Okay, so it not being welded, can I do? I wish. Is there a procedural mirror operation in Maya? This kind of works as. It, if we do world Y, it kind of works. So looking at the proportion, okay, it's like a much more, it's almost a square. So we're like way off on that, but we can basically start to just move stuff again. Now that we have like the general, what's that? What's that? Does that make sense? That's a weird place to put that, but it's basically a square. It almost lives like in here, like this. Kind of like that, and then yeah, this is where the procedural. If I had done it with a spline, I could say, just say like make it thicker. But now I have to do the thickness by hand. Oof, that's not gonna go well. At least it's symmetrical though. Oh yeah. Oh no. Okay, so we kind of call the thickness here, and then you just have everything else kind of trying to match it. This could snap to this one. Then you pull here. And the way they had it designed, I see like some weird thing. They will all come clean it up, but they kind of had it thicker, like that. Like it's thicker here. And then thin along the curve, kind of. I mean, it's subtle. And it's kind of like a bent radius, but these always point back towards where the center of the circle would be, but that we have no topology to even kind of like uh, say that. I feel like it's like this, but it might be like, how much is there straight? It's just pretty straight for a bit there. So I think if we just extended this this way, it's somewhere in there and then it would get smooth. And then how about this piece? You never really see it because the strap goes over it. So you really have never any idea how thick this piece really is. So it's really about this sticking through. I think this is pretty close. Close enough. And then we'll uh, we'll do the thickness with a bevel, probably. And so world Y, has that going to still work out this way? No, we want to scale this. Okay, we're done with symmetry, I think, though. So we'll scale it this way. So something like that, and then we're going to bevel to skinny it back up. And we have some weird floating verts in here for some reason. That's kind of odd. This, one of these. Hmm. 
but yeah, it's a D. And how round, is, it's pretty round, so we could then, this isn't merged, is it? No, let's see if I can do this without, keep it in full symmetry. Verts, merge, that one. Connect. Now, can I have these scale out on component? That's kind of the question. Like, so is there, if I, am I scaling or moving? I, I think I want to move and it wants to be component local of each one. I don't know if that can happen though. Component. Ooh. I don't know about this. Nah, it's still, no. So that, would that be an extra? Like, how can I move these all out? Can you, I need them to all move out on their own normal, each face. I don't know how you do that in this program. We could scale it and that would kind of, kind of get it. That's pretty close. If that's not even, that's object, that's close enough. That's fine, that's, that was the idea. So it'll be kind of round when we subdivide it now. Like this much. And then even on the inner edge, is it round on the inner? Probably though we could it could it could let it we could let it wrap around. Okay, let's see how the subdivide looks. No, okay, that's a big fucking no. So it's gonna need probably just this inner edge might do it might hold it enough. Um, yeah, that looped connect better. But what's off about it? This edge is too hard. Though no, it's 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 a little hard. So I'm gonna pull that in. And something's a little, oh yeah, that's a very boxed out shape up here, this thing here. Ooh, especially with these holding edges. Can this, can I just pull these? No, I mean, that's what the, that's what holds it. Is this? I kind of need to pull that in and then those down a little bit. Yeah, if, the, if those tangents went straight, that would be pretty clean. Okay, so let's go back to symmetry all world Y. Hopefully, is this just one polygon? Oh, okay, that's just one vert holding that whole thing. That's fine. So we can just kind of either go straight or down even. Let's go front view. Oh, it's component. Is this even going to do this at the right angle? Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's a little bit more in line with how this should be turning. This is all pulling there, but let's see how this looks. Ugh. So we need a little, little bit of a hold in this world. So how do I hold this angle harder? It's just an edge loop right here, I guess. Hmm. Okay. So let's hold a loop here, here. Yeah, that's it. That's perfect. That'll be fine. And yeah, I think that's, that's a bell loop. And the low poly one will just come and strip out all that. Actually, I'm going to pull these in, but I'd strip out all the holding edges or leave them, but like whatever. It's Unreal Engine 4, can handle it. Yo, how do you get this out of this tool? This loop, scaling in component or object was working pretty nice. Yeah, that's it. That'll do it. Okay. So that's this is ready to go to ZBrush too. Should we wanna? I mean, I do want I do want the normals baked onto this at the right scale. Save. Let's go up. MLT. There's our belt loop. Okay, so let's make the little prong situation. This is just a cube or a cylinder. The other one. I'd rather it be a cube. Oh, I made two cubes. Let's name this one. This is a belt buckle. And where'd my cube go? I made like a bunch of them. What's this one? They're just on top of each other. Okay. So what's the idea with this thing? This, all we see of it is it basically originates from here. It's hinged on this back part, comes through up at an angle, starting from the center, and then the bottom of it aligns to the that part. So it, it kind of comes from here, but, but there'd be like a hinge around it that we never see. And then 
We extrude it long enough so that it can go out to like here. Probably, I don't think it goes over. I think design-wise it goes to like there. And then even it should still rotate from the center, which would be like here. Like that. And we never see that. This gets, I think this part always gets covered by the belt. And what's the general prong shape of it? It's pretty just like a cylinder, but there is like a, I think it tapers a tiny bit at the end, if anything. And it's more of a cylinder. So we'll hold, we'll hold one edge and then taper the ends probably from like here, something like that. Is this gonna, how will this scale? I think that's still, even though it's in object, it's still scaling from its center. No. Wait, what axis are you scaling from? That's some weird shit right there. Uh, object. No. Hmm. That's a weird place to scale from, but... How come I can't scale this? What's this? What the hell? Uh, world? Why are these little gizmos so tiny? What the, I'm about to just move it by hand. What don't I understand about this? How come you can't just scale? Oh, that would be it. Scaling from here would do it. How come these gizmos got so small? Yeah, I would say it does something like that, probably. Definitely could have gone for a cylinder, because now I have to do like the whole extrusion thing. Am I really going to subdivide and bake this in Substance Paint, or I'll just stick this thing right on there? And yeah, I have to do all the gating. I guess we'll gate it just in case. Oh, what the fuck? Just in case I do want to bake this. I don't know if you bake details like this. Whoa. So we'll hold that. Hold this edge. Kind of middly hold this one. And then let the thing go around pretty much. And maybe I could hold like a. Oh, it's not symmetrical if I do that. Oh, I have this on. Oh, let's turn that off. Connect. Yeah, that'll that'll probably be okay. It's gonna be a little thinner than if I do it like this. Ooh. Could scale it. But from like where you see it, I mean, it's like tiny. Or I'll scale this, but it's not scaled back into the real world size, but that's probably okay. Um. Yeah, so gigantic belt buckle. I think this thing is a little too small. Okay, we gotta hold the bottom harder if it's gonna be like that, or it has to move in like this. But that's pretty good. I think this probably touches directly like what happens. There's like the belt comes over, then goes in, and then this goes through it. I think this actually comes from here. I need to go look at a real belt buckle. But I can adjust this once I th once I lace the first buckle, I'll kind of remember how the construction works. Is that right? Isn't this thing like wrapped around it? I think it's back actually. I'm gonna put it back. I'll put it like here. Once I put the real one, once I make the first one, I'll kind of understand it a little better. If you stuff it together, start with UE4 and then import to UE5 when it releases the public and full version. Oh, you mean like, yeah, like exporting. U yeah, that's true, but you kind of want to plan, or I would want to plan for like lighting and materials and are you using Nanite and are you, are you gonna try to use the new tech stuff? Um. Like I started prototyping Unreal Engine 5 so that I could use the new control rigs and so that I could use the new lighting and had like kind of strategize how I was going to approach it. Because you have to decide what core tech you're going to use and then you have to you know author all your assets on it and then start building all your logic based on modifying those things. So you kind of hop into preview 5 to see like, oh, do I, you know, how does this new stuff work? Whereas if you build it completely in 4 and then upgrade it, it's like you're not going to have built into the framework of your game the the Unreal Engine 5 stuff because you built it in 4. 
But I guess if you, if you build very generically, it would be fine. But even the input system is different in Unreal Engine 5. Like, are you going to use the new input system? And all, all the new systems, you know, you kind of want to build that into the core of the game, I would think. Belt. I'm just going to call it Rod. I don't know what that thing's called. Okay, so there's the belt buckle, kind of. We can still scale it around at this point, but the topology is clean to go back to ZBrush should we need to. And if we strip out the holding edges, it's basically the game topo. So do I group it or do I combine it? I think combining is pretty safe at this point. We can always strip it back out. Let's combine it. Call this belt buckle. So this is an insert brush that like you can get for free from a lot of places, but uh, how do you send the origin back to zero? Other than manually doing it, which is what I'm gonna do. I feel like there's a button for that, I don't remember it. How do you make the, it's plus, plus and minus, okay, cool. Yeah, it got real small. It's real skinny though, but whatever, I'll take it. Okay, so there's a gigantic belt buckle, and we'll just dupe from here. So we'll duplicate this one. Just keep this as it. I need to organize this. There's a kink in the in the buckle middle centerpiece. Okay, let's see if it if I can get away without it. But yeah, I think I think you're right. Yeah, there it is, <laughs> gigantic belt buckle. So what's the idea with it with its placement? It is um, so they placed like the rod in the middle versus the D-ring being in the middle. So we should probably pivot this object from here, you know, like that. Like that's how you would place it is by saying that like, oh my God, is that, um, okay, so we might have to, th I should have built this procedurally, but whatever we can, it's actually not whatever. <laughs> I should have built this belt buckle procedurally. I would build this whole, I would build every piece of this mesh procedurally if I could and just be like, up the thickness. But uh, it's close. It's a little thin. No, I, it's okay. It's a little thin. I would want it to show up a little bit more. Okay, so here, here's the thing too. Yeah, so we have this buckle. And we want to group it because we need to work, be able to work in the belt, the belt buckle's local space because we're going to start to transform it. Oh no, where are you? Oh god. Okay, so we're going to do center pivot. Oh man, this is control rig now. <laughs> this is getting into control rig logic of sway, uh, space switching and stuff. But where we're gonna we're gonna globally place the prop, but we still need to really get back into it and then work locally uh, in a local like linear space. Um, because at least I need to, because I need to go put the actual strap in there. But I'm gonna basically build this strap in Maya, and like then I'll, if I feel like it, I could always insert mesh brush it later in ZBrush. Like once I build out this topology and I can make sure it works, make sure it's gonna auto UV clean and everything, then it's like. Uh, all these all these pieces can kind of become like library pieces in ZBrush to kind of kit bash and do a little faster. So um, let's make a plane. I should probably add that into this. So let's do create polygon plane. I should even like pre-parameterize it. Uh, it's so, so small and it has too many subdivisions. Yo, okay, we're gonna do. In uh, in Maya, you can say one. In Houdini, you can never give something like this. It does it by like span. It always has two. It's like switching between like switching between Maya and uh, Houdini is always takes a day. So, okay, so this got untransformed. Yeah, this is control rig life now. <laughs> okay, so this thing is default now in the space of of the buckle. So now we can rotate ninety. And then move it in. Uh, this better be an object space, uh, component space. That's fine too, but it's object space, right? Because we want this to be, or it's going to be easier to model this when it's in the space of the buckle. But at the same time, you kind of need it in in the world space to be here, against the chest to kind of get it right. Okay, so let's. Uh, who's what the fuck? Okay, so we want this to be an object. This this I might want you to I'm gonna make a script that puts this gigantic right there. <laughs> I mean it's like pretty important. So it's like this, and again we model this buckle once and then never again. We just use it every single time. Oh I'm going the wrong way. So so it originates 
what? Okay, so the buckle is attached to the chest here, and the strap is atta attached to the chest there, and then it loops through. Is that what? Is, I'm, I'm, is it the other way? <laughs> I don't know how belts work. Wait. Well, this one's like slightly different. So, okay. So the curvy part of the belt is where it enters and then it ends at the D part. So it's actually, let's, let's start it like this. So it enters from this side, like it gets bolted on and then it comes through here and then it ends over here. This is the end. So it ends towards the straight part. This is belt theory 101 here. Okay, okay, let's grab this. Uh, I'm gonna go all the way back to the modeling tool to use connect that's procedural. Three, four. Four is enough. I can I can I can manually model four. Still working in object space. So the important part really is that this is up here, enough to make it through, but here it's down. Is that right? Like this? And we should do these together. And they're thick too, so we got to consider if we're modeling the outside of the inside of this at the moment. Meaning that this buckle needs to probably move out a little bit. So let me grab these two, pull it up, because we're going to extrude down. Though it's actually still working. But I'm going to move the buckle now. And the buckle probably has a little bit of this going on like that to help with this whole um, Like it's probably offset the thickness of the leather or it's, oh no, you know what it is? It has a, we don't see it, but it's, it has a piece of leather around it here that's strapped to the, strapped to the other side of the chest is what's happening. I don't think I'm going to model that though. Though if you ever had to, you know, make it so that like you could see it with the thing unbuckled, you would need to model the back of it. And so then this is the loose part. This is the fun part. Like if we go... I have a bunch of screenshots of the Witcher and like they, they leave these out like big, like it's a big design call in Witcher 3 that these are like flopped out like this. Uh, so in this case, they have it kind of wrap, wrapped. It goes up, it's this big loop out and then back down. So I'm, I'm doing it wrong. So after it, wait, what? It goes into like this big loop out of the gate. How come I can't see this? What is this? Oh no, I've done this wrong. I've done this wrong. Wait, this goes down. Yo, how does this work? What the fuck? This is through here. Oh, this is like this huge loop immediately after. So what have I done wrong? So it's it's kind of like this. Like the design calls to have it big and moving here. But see, once you get the with the space right, this just models. It's it's just so much easier to like get this done. So theirs is kind of like that. And I guess there would be normally like a loop here or something. This seems kind of wrong, but it's. I'm just working on getting the construction right. Then I should be able to extrude in this kind of space too, like this. Like this is too long, but I was just having like some uh, messing with it. This is the wrong angle to judge this, but I'm just trying to shorten it. Um, that feels wrong, but um. And then this is like, but I think that's the general construction. And then, so technically there's a piece of leather holding this over here, which we could model, I guess, why not? Just a couple, just a plane. And then this has a bolt on it, which I'll also model that on. And this will just all be one piece that I just like, did like copy around. And same with this belt. It'll, once I make this belt, I'll make like a straight version and then just keep using it over and over again. But uh, that's pretty much it. So let's look at some uh, extrusion now. This might need to be a little bit like it, like this, a little thicker. Yeah, okay. So let's extrude this piece. Oh no, how's this gonna go? That's fine. Are we going down, in, up, who knows? Up, up seems reasonable. That's fine. And we just need some subdivisions to kind of just uh, get this thing tucked in there better. Connect. This loop, uh, staying in object space, this is still fair game, like that. We wanna stay pretty minimal with this. So 
What I would like is that like this doesn't go below the ground, meaning that this buckle needs to kind of adjust. Or is there another loop in here to eat the slack of this? I guess that's really what's missing is it needs another loop here. Is it G? Yeah, had that tool. So this actually wants to be component, but object is fine kind of like this. So really, I guess the belt would squish here, but you know, you're not gonna, not gonna see it. Something like that. So this is where the most resolution comes in. And ooh, I don't like that this. I don't like that this is going in. Like this, this piece of poly is going in the game. So I want this to like not have stuff like this happening. So this makes me feel like that maybe this object needs to be up. Or it needs to rotate, is that what's going on? I think it needs to be like this, right? And I don't, actually, I don't like that. Let's 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 really care about this buckle. But again, this is like game topology. Like this is going in the, this will get rigged to the skeleton. So I want this to not, just be good, not, not, not suck. So get this thing away from the body a little bit. And then we'll have the buckle basically handle the, it does this, I see, yeah, because it kind of sits on top of it like that. So that sorts that. And yeah, that's a lot cleaner overall. Okay. I like it. That's kind of cool. And then this whole thing goes in the game. Like that's not there's there's games where you would you would just bake this into the texture of the chest, but no, we're going to that topology is going in. That's why I'm spending so much time on it. Uh I don't have the screenshots here, but like if you I have lots of references of the Witcher and like these belts are very prominent, especially in, on the back too. So these, this same exact belt buckle is uh, is this. These it's going to be the same thing. I'm just going to duplicate it. This one's there's, these are slightly different. These have like um, actually this one's going to be the, pretty much the same. This one has a little holder on it though. But again, it's going to be the same D ring over and over again. So a lot of lot of those on this character, but I like that. And they put them in the game, like they're they're not texture. Final Fantasy, there'd be texture. I like it. Let's put another one in there. So we have this group. Can I just duplicate it? So we're working in world space now. Yeah, it could be object actually, it's fine. And so that's, it's like kind of, let's go back to the reference. Uh, it's a little bit higher at the column, collar. And uh, this one's right below it at the X, but like not at the end of the, the pecs. So these are like, these are like landmarks. Yeah, and I just I just couldn't hate anything more in the world than the ZBrush transpose tool. So just back here. These are a little thin. I feel like these could be a little thicker. Um considering that there's like a big slope change here, we'll just stick it there. So the proportions are off, uh I can kind of see already. So the belt buckles might reinform some bit of a remodel in certain parts. Because this is like up here. And it doesn't feel right the way that I've modeled it to put it there, but but it's something like that with the D ring, maybe if, if not centered a little bit pulled this way, I would kind of like it to be like this. I would consider this the center of the, of the, of the object. Uh, I should have put the studs in before I started duplicating, but it's not possible. But I like it like this with the D ring like that centered. Whereas I think it, it's kind of like that. I think it looks better here like this. Um, so if we look at like the space going on here, it's like collar strap. This is a little closer on his, a little bit more up too. But Geralt, Geralt, I've been, I did like a little study on his, he, he's gigantic. This, he's like a big, like, um, I think he's like probably sick, sick something. And then his shoulders are so, he's got a huge torso and we don't. So it's just going to fit a little different. We're like more like a rogue and this guy's like full warrior. We are we are quite slim as metahumans, so this is this will fit differently. Um, but just looking at this proportion again of like collar, this thing, wolfer thing, like wolf necklace, I think it's on the outside, and this X, there's a lot of space here. No space there. But we are a different size chest. But what this could mean is that like 
if we're going off of this one, this stuff basically points right back to his like Adam's apple, like right here. This is kind of like a nice curve. And the, the design element that kind of like bridges the curve is the belt. We don't have that. It's like, it's like here, right? So that would either mean I pull these up, make them shorter or move this down. And if I make these shorter, I think the outfit kind of dies because it's like, it's kind of about shoulder pads. I'm gonna bring this thing back down here because this belt is kind of like the visual bridge across the divide here. So I'm gonna take that aspect of it more than its placement to the collar. And we just, we just have a different body. So the question is, does it look good slightly above, slightly below, slightly above? Or like right across the, like, like the middle? How did they do it? They have it below. They have it like here. That leaves a lot of empty space there. And like, that's not like the witch. It's like, it's, the witch is very like tight up here. Like there's none of this empty. There's no empty space up there. No negative space, but oh well. So I am going to extrude this a little bit further. And we've got to put a little strappy thing, a little bolt on there. Same with this one. Man, just working with actual poly faces. It's amazing coming into ZBrush. Okay. So there's our straps. Uh, we can then individually model them to be a little bit different, but that's working out for me. I like it. The details. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the bolt, the boltery. It's just a big flat uh, cube, smooth cube. So let's go build a couple of those. It's down here. We could do this multiple ways. Let us uh, smooth, smooth. That's probably even too many, but I'll, I'll take it. Chop this thing in half. Is at the back? Yep. bolt and just to be safe as far as placement we could do something like this might even i don't we really shouldn't cap the back as far as uv'ing this later but i know it's oh, I, oh you know what i should do is fucking uv these before i make like 10 of them and not well but then again you end up mm, at the same time i am going to end up kind of like modeling them but this is probably going to end up with me UVing that that strap like ten times, which is not the way. Uh, bolt. I need to organize in a minute, so we'll keep the original and start scaling off of this one. This wants to go into strap space, which is in that group. Where are you? So let's throw you into. I probably haven't named these, have I? Nope. This is belt. Let's call this uh, buckle, chest, upper. Buckle, chest, lower. We have to organize all this because this is all going back into Substance Painter at some point. So to this one, we're closer. You go there and your rotation locally on Y should be 90, which it will probably not be. No nope. scale. We should freeze, freeze that. Oh, that's fine too. Freeze it, center its pivot. Oh, I fucked it up. Oh well, we'll place places by hand anyway. It doesn't have to be perfectly ninety anyway. But if, I shouldn't have. I should have froze it beforehand. Basically, this needs to. Where is it? Here. I need to freeze it now. Freeze history. Pivot. So now that one's. That one's better. So I won't duplicate. I'm gonna just delete this one. We want to freeze it beforehand so it doesn't have those pre those pre rotations on it. bolts here oh these aren't subnamed either hmm. I have some stuff to do so this should just be a 90 and we just get like easy planar placement on this thing and then we'll just scale it as needed and then in ZBrush we'll sculpt like the um it like pushing in and stuff like that maybe just so the edge is like kind of out. I don't know, we can continue to kind of like art direct that one though. So bolt, uh, duplicate into this thing's space. 
Does it? It keeps its transform. Okay. Because this one, if we write it back to 90, will orient itself to that plane, yeah. And then we can object move it. Keeping, uh, keeping the orientation correct. And considering how big the bolt is and how close it is to the face, because it's quite likely that, you know, like a, a lot of the shots of the, of the metahuman will be from about here. That they're big so having them be 3d is is nice versus like you could easily bake that into like the leather texture i, I would i would keep this topology i think that looks pretty cool okay so we have thickened these they're not done thickened this one it's done it's ready to go to zbrush these won't smooth these straps this is already smoothed which we'll leave it this one will smooth pretty much the same but when we rig it to the skeleton, we'd keep it something like that. These aren't going to smooth. Yeah, we got to fix those. Because I am going to sculpt those. Okay. Oh, fuck. Okay. So basically, I got to finish one and then reduplicate it down. Or just gate all of them. Let's just gate this thing. Let's get this ready to be smoothed and sculpted. Uh, so it's leather. So let's see here. We'll do this. Right, we could definitely do it symmetrically, but... Let that get pretty round. Kind of go for holding this edge. I don't know if it's worth holding that. This has to be held pretty rigidly. And it probably doesn't even need a subdivision down the middle. Just let it go round with all these holding edges. But uh, let's see how leathery that feels. That's kind of fine. I think that's fine. Lose It gets a little thin. It's definitely a little thin feeling. Oops, undoing. Oh, that's no, one. It could probably have been extruded a little bit thicker, but we I didn't know. Yeah, we either drop an edge down the middle or we make it thicker because it gets very thin. Looks like a, like in context of like a shot. It's a little thin. Like it has thickness, but like in a game, like especially in a game, if it's playing in like a 1080, like 1080 viewport or something like that, it's like that's not a pixel. That's not even a pixel wide. So it needs to be thicker. Um, even even a holding edge isn't gonna fix that. I don't really know the best way of doing that. I think we could extrude the whole top face and then delete the edges. Or is it an object move? It's it's really an extrude. Uh, of all the things, it's not that difficult, I guess. What's up, Vivek? Uh, I already have all these edges in here. It's kind of annoying, but I'm just going to give it... I'm going to just try to thicken it. It's probably, it's probably some way I'm not thinking about that's easier than this. But this will also work out at some point. Can I just move it in object space? Oh, that seems fine, actually. Oh, we can just move it in object space. Good. This is why we have it in this world transform. Yeah, we kind of want this to be a little bit overboard to actually see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Well, and we'll we'll loop it down a little bit harder. So we have to kind of adjust things. Okay. So we're we're finding that the final game thicknesses and whatnot. Um. There's also still a world where I come and I retopple this later, even. So we'll see. Like if I really like how this is coming out, I'll retop it even again to make it look better. Which I think I do. I like. I kind of like how this is headed. Yeah, that's pretty good. And so we just gotta scoot this uh, this bolt around now. I think we have too much slack on it too. I think it got too long. But uh, we'll kind of see. Like it's it's probably here, and then it's like, what's all this? It's like it should be like almost like immediately against it probably. Yeah, I, I think it, I think that this has to be like here, and then this piece is too long. I think that looks better. I'm gonna delete this bottom one. Just copy this one down. But yeah, so that's uh, is this is this one subdivided? Let's make sure. 
So everything is subdivided. So like this is sculptable now. This would all this would come in sculpted, and if we subdivide this one, that's what it would look like too. So we're basically have we're gonna basically have like a full subdivision surface model of this by the end. So I could go like finish this in high poly, like you know, render it in Arnold platform. This is Maya. What software do you use to create these things? I'm using Maya. You could use Blender, Maya or Blender, pretty similar until you get to the metahuman part, but the, the general modeling and whatnot, the UVing uh, could be done in any program really. But basically between Maya and, do I even have ZBrush open? I don't, that's how much I hate that program. But Maya and ZBrush basically. How do you get started on learning something like this? I've been on VR for some time. This, look up character modeling on YouTube or 3D modeling in general. I would say look at flipped normals, the flipped normals YouTube channel uh, I just continue to do a bad version of what they do. They're like professional character artists. Flip normals is pretty good. So I would say, however, we do want to model this part that's under it in case I want to have, like if this was a jacket and I wanted to have it open, I'd like to have that base mesh basically. So I'm going to model both sides. This thing already has thickness on it, so let's duplicate it. We're working inside of a global, so we can still work in object space, which is nice. And it's basically this, like right here. So we don't need any of this tail. But what I want is like kind of the thickness of it to just kind of stay. I'm gonna pull out the some of the holding. I'll pull out the holding edges for now. But I just want this cube to start with, just to make things a little easier. Okay, so the idea with this is that it's also being held on the other side of the chest and then it wraps around this, I think. And I'm not, I'm just gonna like extrude a face into it. I'm not gonna get a too fancy bridge. I'm a little concerned it's probably fine, but I know it's just a cube, but I'm gonna merge. I'm sure it's fine. Eight, is that how many points are on a cube? Probably. So I just want this piece in case I want to make like an open version of it and uh, don't have to think about it. So is that what it is? Is it grabbing it there? It's got to be, right? It's like this. That seems about right. It's basically just that. And then maybe I'll bevel the edge or something like that. We're going deep in this belt theory right here. But these little details are like kind of the fun part, I think. I think that's kind of cool. Oh no, mm, that seems kind of okay. So put the bolt there and not that we even see it, but I'm gonna bevel this, hold up. Let's take these two pieces, solo, eh, oh no, oh no, hmm. I don't know, I'm enjoying solving this, so I'm gonna solve it. And then for really no reason, I'm going to bevel this because even in the low, yeah, I, I just, I wouldn't, you'd see this in the, you'd see this in the reflection, uh, basically. That's fine. I can kind of scale these back still, still in object space. Yeah. Now this edge got rotated kind of funny. But uh, yeah, you're not really gonna see this all too much. I don't think this comes out like that. <laughs> Hold on, I get this, how the hell do these how do these buckles work? What am I doing wrong here? That doesn't seem right. Uh, I forget what the little prong is coming out of with the D. So let's go look at belt buckle real quick. <laughs> One second. I don't know how to do belt buckles. Belt buckle. Hmm. But then where's the leather grab onto? So it is that. That's what we've drawn. But how does the leather intersect with it? What am I doing wrong? Oh, there's a hole. There's a hole coming through it. Yeah, so that's right. There's just a hole. And then sometimes there's this little loop there. I'm going to model this loop, and then we can just like use it or not use it. And we are going to model these stitches because they're close to the head. Where I can see it. Okay, so there's this. I guess I'm gonna model that because it does look really screwed up without it. 
so I got to chop that out. Okay, this just turned into like a bigger project than I thought. But anyway, you model these buckles once and then you got them. So that's kind of kind of worth it. Um, I should have modeled it flat, but it's in a global, but I should have definitely probably approached this doing it flat would have been smarter. Uh, oh well. Okay, so we're looping through here. There's really no cute way of doing this. So I'm going to, we can always slide the edge. So I'm just going to insert edges. But yeah, basically if you don't see, like I'm thinking if I use this ever on like an open coat, if you don't see the opening, it doesn't make any sense. So it goes all the way back to the de to the ring. This cut goes all the way back to here and then you fill it in and I'll, I'll scoot it back. But basically this doesn't, this is gone. When it comes to making the suit and integrating the character to be you, was there a special suit you purchased or made it yourself? What suit are you talking about? Are you talking about the mocap suit or like the 3D suit? I bridgeth, bridge, bridge. We're gonna go solo, I can't see what's going on. Oh no. Bridge. I mean, this is a symmetrical object, but I'll just do it like this. Yeah, so that's this is kind of like the low poly version of it. Though we beveled this edge, but I think that's worth it. Yeah, so it's like that. So let's take these pieces again. And this is not going to be right, but it's we're kind of hand modeling at this point anyway. So it's pretty much like right up into here. And then as soon as you show an opening like this, to have this not be beveled feels kind of bad. But then we start to add a lot of geometry, like too much geometry to the object. So we got to call it at some point. Like we're not, the game doesn't happen in the belt buckle like this, but it's easy to want it to have those details. And we're scaling off the wrong axis now, but it's kind of okay. Hmm. So that's kind of the belt buckle. This is a little bit funny here. I would, I would have beveled a little bit more circular. I mean, it's not too late, I suppose. Uh, we're now hand modeling. We're not doing like nice bevels. But yeah, I suppose if the face was to come up, it would be more like here. This back, you will definitely, well, I don't know about never, but very unlikely to see it. But basically pushing the shape more towards the circle. So I could definitely use another loop, but uh, I was trying to stay low poly and I've already kind of not done that. Hmm. Yeah, so that's the other end of the belt. That's what it that looks like. I mean, this is good just to have this construction down. I'm going to build a, like a belt for a suit pretty soon too. So, okay. And then I'll stick another one of these over here. And this kind of, info I kind of liked not so much slack in it. So like this, and then we basically don't need this extra extrusion uh, here. This we don't need. E I'm gonna pull it a little bit back. Uh, I mean, I guess we had a little bit more. Okay, if we do that, let me see this piece here. Yeah, I'm gonna grab these a little bit further out. Let's get this thing ready for subdiv modeling. So it's going to have a lot of topology for a little belt loop, but it has an opening in it. So this thing is symmetrical, but I'm going to gate it unsymmetrically. It'll be close enough though. We have to hold this. We have to hold this. We have to hold the back edge here. Probably have to inner hold those two. Ew. Let's see. Eh, you know, I think that's probably okay, actually. That's, that's fine. This being round, I don't want to add any more, but 
Nah, we have to hold it. Okay, so we got to hold this. Maybe just one here is okay. Not perfectly centered. Yeah, it gets so thin there. Oh, is it because I'm not holding this? It's this edge. I see. That's the one that's, that's wrecking it. And this tier too, technically. That's that's a little better. Oh, and then there's this one here. So asymmetrical, but oh well. Uh, once we drop the the low poly, will be symmetrical when we. But it's the the sculpting mesh is going to be kind of asymmetrical. Three. Is a belt. And now that we see that it, what it looks like when it'll when it's smooth, there that's what it'll look like in ZBrush too. Let's pull it out a little bit more slack. How the other one is. Slightly different objects though. Is this not smooth? Is that what's going on? There we go. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Again, putting all the time and the detail in the stuff that's like immediately next to the head. It's like head, collar, head, shoulder pads, head strap, head chest, head belt. Like this, this right here is like everything. And then I'll have way less detailing on the stuff down here. But this strap, now that I've made it, it's going to go everywhere. It, two of them go there, two go there, two go there. Another one goes here. It's the one on the belt. There's probably two on the shoes. Like this belt, this strap gets used everywhere. And we'll just basically keep extruding out the strappy parts. But basically having the belt, the D-ring modeled out, and a general idea of thickness to start from, this, is, uh, this piece gets used everywhere. So I'm going to UV it too while I, I sort of... Uh, Mindful of that we call this buckle. Um, hmm. I guess strap one. I bet you there's a name for this, but anyway. Bolt one, strap two with bolt two. These are the kind of things I would make like I could make like a whole procedural tool in Houdini that just does this. You just like define the two points and it would construct this whole thing like procedurally not probably worth the time but I like programming those things uh, yeah it's pretty good okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna UV this piece while I'm because I'm gonna end up duplicating it like 10 times so I, I should just UV it right now before I forget now I'm just gonna UV them for shape but there's a question of where in the material atlas something like this would go, but we'll, we'll just UV it straight up for now, just to have the on the shells. But I don't know how these are gonna get placed uh, in the pic in the big picture of like the whole outfit yet. Let's do camera based unfold. It's fine. Can it? It should be able to straighten itself out too. Straighten UVs? No, it's a it's a layout thing. It's orient. Bleh. Okay, well I'll straighten by hand later. A little smaller for now. So this D ring. Okay, so let's drop back into not subdivided mode so we can think about this properly. Okay, so that's the same exact thing, but we'll give it a unique because I mean, who, yeah. I, again, if we do the open version of it, these should have different UV, UV space or whatever. And unfold. Good enough. Uh, let's do the D ring. It's gonna be a little bit trickier. These are two separate objects, so we could just cut it right in half, or we can open it like uh, it's unlikely to see both sides. Like it's kind of always pressed against the body, so cutting it right down the middle is not so bad. So if we take this thing, um, oh, does it have UVs at all? Let's just give it camera based and then we just cut it right down the edge it's kind of okay cut that's kind of okay we could then chop it there I don't think we end up seeing the d-ring too frequently There's a couple places we could we could cut it if we don't want this kind of distortion. I'm kind of okay with it though, just to have it all be one hull, then open it up like a cylinder. But the other logical place to then cut it is like here. 
that's not a great place for a seam, but let's see. Um, no, not optimize unfold. Yeah, I don't know if I like that better though. I don't like this seam. I think the belt buckle in most cases goes over it though, right? Like, yeah, you don't see it on multiple levels. So that's a fine place for the seam then. I'll leave it, that's fine. Uh, next is, however, this piece. Probably do the same thing. How do you weld all the seams back together? I forget how to do that. Um, I mean, I mean, to be honest, actually, to be honest, this is this is kind of fine too. Like just how it's all shitty like this. But if I end up using this piece like a thousand times, I'll feel bad just always looking at this UV. So I guess it's worth cleaning it up now. I forget how you weld. Where is it? So we have cut, sew. That's what it is. Let's. Can we just sew everything? Is that is that allowed? Yeah. Okay. Good. So now let's think about where I'm just gonna cut it right down the middle. We have that edge. And you don't typically see both sides, so I feel okay about that. Yeah, I'll just cut that. Unfold. Oh, right in half. Yeah, that's that's okay. Uh, it's gonna it's kind of annoying to have to uh, have three shells to manage for like this little object, but that's what auto UV layouts are for. Okay, so that part's UV'd. Um, we're going full thickness on this because of uh, it's going to be like a game mesh. I'm not going to bake it in. So let's see. What do we want to do for you? We'll just slice it around the back edge and then unfold the, the corners. It's just a box. It's just a long box. So let us take all these edges here. Is that right? Sew them back. Cut that piece free completely and then cut the corners. Those ones might overlap, we'll see. And cut and UV shell unfold. Why why the angle though? It's like clearly that's it's like a straight object. And unfold. That's that's gonna be fine. I'll orient them later. And what was that? That was this piece. So we got to do this one the same way. I don't even know if this has. Oh, this has a lot. It's apology on it to hold the the lines. We could have. Eh, it's easy enough. We could have UV'd the lower poly too before I cut into it. Uh, let's just give it something. No seams. Nice. Let's do the same idea. The back edge you basically never even see. The back face. Oh, so where do we call that on this one? Call it. So yeah, how are we gonna unwrap this piece? I guess I'll take it to here. Yeah, I'll just cut it right through here. What do we do on this? Oh, we did it on this edge. Uh, we could definitely do the. I'm gonna do the one, one, one back. Here. Yeah, you'll never see that edge, but I, I pulled the one back in case you did see it. Put the seam on the rick, the really bottom bottom. Okay, we'll cut this. So the corners will work here. Cause, but how the fuck is this gonna unwrap now? We're gonna have to unwrap this so that these layouts are. Ooh, I careful, extruding shit. Like if this is that gonna work out? Well, that that'll open up. What about these edges? And then here. Oh, that's a funny one. Oh, this is a weird one. How's this gonna open? I can solve this side. How far do we go? All the way up to oh, this midsection. Do we cut through? Oh, this one's a little bit more confusing. Oh, that's that's not gonna work. Hold on. 
we want to open this up so this will flap open we almost don't want that one this will cut open um i just gotta cut it and we'll look at it this inner part's not ready Kind of like these probably have to open up too, all the way back to the edge really, like even back to here, this, this, this. I don't know if that's, that. I just want these to kind of open up, fold out, and we want to go all the way back to there. So those will just open up, and then this intersection is going to just be its own island, huh? It's kind of weird. I don't know if I like that idea. Oh no, 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 it just flaps open. That might work, we'll see. There's a slit. Oh, and this somewhere? Mm, it's a funny one, it's like a spaceship or something. Uh, uh, let's see how this opens up. That's kind of a weird one. Oh, it's not bad, it's not bad. Um, we wanna op We wanna free this edge here. And then this should just be flat, yeah. The bottom's flat, so it's basically this edge that's holding it all, kind of ripping it a little bit. It's a weird one. This is a problem. So I'll just completely free that piece. I don't like having like a million islands because we're gonna have a lot of these belts, you know, but... Um, if we were worried about texture space, you can always stack them on top of each other and there's a couple things, but I'm not. I'll have like, if this thing requires like, you know, four texture sheets to do it, fuck it, that's it's, it's fine. It's like a hero character. There we go, that's pretty clean. Just trying to keep it somewhat minimal, uh, even though that's a lot of islands for one stupid belt belt piece but yeah so i didn't want to have to do this like if i hadn't uv'd it now i would have to have done that per for every single belt which I, I've, I've done that to myself so many times so congrats to me not doing it today so they're all kind of uv'd and we'll just lay them out together for now but um the actual uv oh my god look at this uv layout awful Luckily, Substance Painter will, like, kind of... I th I think Substance Painter comes in, like, aligns things. I'm, I might be wrong about that. But when we do the final layout, you know, for a part that, that that's that big, you know, like, this whole thing is normally, like, oh, you can't grab that like this. This is going to be, like, you know, like, this... It's going to be, like, this small somewhere, like, in the corner. But there's going to be, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least nine of these in the in the final pattern, so... Um, I don't have a layout strategy just yet, but uh, we have it. We have like the the raw layout of the UVs on it. So these ones are like final. Like this is very likely w by just eventually stripping out the holding edges. That's what goes in the game for that top belt piece. We'll see. So let's do uh, duplicate. Copy and paste in Maya is evil. You don't want to do that. It's a duplicate kind of kind of place copy and paste like brings all this weird logic and linking together by default anyway I don't know what, I don't know how you get rid of that what so there they are some strappies UV'd not only are they UV'd they are boxed they are sub deed and they're ready to be sculpted and they're also could go in the game and you read properly, so that's nice. It's very likely this is the final mesh too. Um minus the gating. So I could UV this too, but that's probably not worth it. But pretty happy with those traps, because th them's are going, they're going everywhere on there. So let's let's see, let's go a little bit let's save first of all. I don't want to lose any of this. Incremental save. I know they have an increment in save, I don't trust it. Uh, okay. So one of the next things to probably consider, we could definitely start to bring this into like actual game res 
or actual sculpting res. So that's probably a good step next. And I can always bring this little bolt. I mean, that, that thing auto UVs, so it's really not a huge issue. Oh, I should delete the history off of all that stuff. Um, but like any bolts that would go on the shoulder pads can be, I can bring this piece in to ZBrush as multiple insert meshes. Insert meshes are almost not worth the effort though, but maybe, maybe, maybe do that. So, okay, so there's there's some more detailing and I do want the, all this detailing. Now there's a sub, there's another belt inside of that top strap. So there's that to consider. There's also this situation here and there's the big belt, the sword belt. This holds the sword on, right? With the deering and whatnot. And I'm gonna do that completely in Maya, like ZBrush. I tried it, it's just it's more effort than it's worth. Um, but I think I'm gonna bring these shoulder pads to full resolution and full boxed out so that they could go back to ZBrush. I think that'll just look better too. So I'm gonna finish bringing these into the into the thick world. Yeah. So let's see here. Let's do. Just gonna add a couple loops to start. Oops. Could have done it with a connect so it would be a little bit more even, but didn't. And being somewhat lazy by keeping these together. Let's see here. I think I am going to bevel them even in the low poly. And now the question becomes, I should have considered how I want the backs to be, because they're going to be full mesh, even in the rigged version, I think. Because there's going to be angles where the arms go up where you would kind of see under them. So we could should have probably solved this before I started extruding stuff, but didn't. I could extrude from here down. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's see if it pulls the pulls it all correctly in the right angles. So let's do extrude edge. Now is it thickness? Local Z or offset? It's not offset, hopefully. I'm pretty sure it's this one. And I would be wrong. And it's not that one. And it is offset, motherfucker. Well, at least it's one of them. It's offset. It's this one. So it's okay for it to go like into the arm. That's generally fine. And then we could just bridge this whole thing together into having a whole backside. Uh, Quander is what we would UV back there, but uh, we could then also maybe do a. Now, is this offset or thick? I don't never. It's not that one. This one is thickness going in. Okay, so the edges become an issue, so we would have to merge. And we have, is this a quad still? Okay, so that's where this starts to be an issue. It's like we don't want to, this needs to go back to ZBrush clean. So if I merge these together, that's a triangle? No. If I delete this, if these merge into a point, this is a cube here. It's a boxed cube, just like that would be, which would be acceptable. It's basically the mirror of the other side. And we do kind of want something like this for zebra. So this is a little messy, but let me see if I kind of like merge those together, how bad that is. Like this, this, oh, but then what happens to this piece? Wait, so what we want to do is delete these. There's no reason for it to be this messy. I just didn't consider this like earlier on like that and then Kind of awful and I have to go do that four times but that would start to that would solve a lot of issues if we bring it if we treat it this way um we don't need like the full faces but just to have the corners in. and then again we could just bridge across into quads so I probably could have constructed it this way from the beginning before I extruded out the edges this was kind of the problem but I'm making do here I could remake that whole object, even though it took me like an hour to figure out the proportions of it. I could remake this whole thing if this turns out to be like an actual issue. I'm gonna have to confirm that these are all welded together nicely. Um, oh, it's the outer edges, these ones, these ones here. Can we get it? Nope. No, oh, 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 oh there, there. These two go away. This is where, like, when you're in views like this, it's like a you could, like select something by accident in the background, and you're just like slowly you're just like slowly destroying your model. You just don't know yet. 
That's why I use solo a lot, though. Yeah, yeah. So basically, while this thing was still the plane, if I had solved this first, this would all have been like perfect geometry back here. But I didn't. I rushed to the detailing before considering what the whole base should be. Hopefully, I'm not selecting anything else. I don't think I am. Oh, that's not going to work, actually. Hold on. Bridge. Okay. So, crap. I have to do that to this one, too. Oh, anyway. Before I extruded these edges up, I should have just extruded thickness flat back. And then if I wanted to delete this. Now I'm doing like this, like a whole like wonky reconstruct to. Uh, okay, well, I did this sloppy, but this is my first time trying to. It's kind of like about process. Like if I, if my only job was to model this one piece, like probably would have sorted that out. But I was like doing this like whole process. Of going back and forth between ZBrush and Maya. Now I'm kind of favoring just not even going to ZBrush that much. Thickness it was offset, yeah. So we're going to go down a little bit. Like really thickening it down. But it's thickening towards the body. So like if this intersects with the body, that's fine. And then we thicken until the corners are like pretty much touching. And then we go clean it up. Which that was too far. And we just have like insane weird topology down here. Can I just do this all at once? This might be faster just to do this. Do similar actions all together. Batch batch similar actions. Now I can hit G. Oh, but then I got to I got yeah, we'll just do the, we'll just again batch batch the similar things. G. Oh, careful. G. And here to here, bridge, hit the Windows key, and G, and G. This makes me really sad back here. But you'll never see it, so it's kind of just like extra, extra help. Okay, okay, so. So now it's time, like this is potentially, oh no, I was gonna bevel it. Mm. So I think in, the shoulders are so prominent that like you will see this sharp edge here and this sharp edge here. And I don't want them to be metal, they are leather. However, I didn't edge loop this, they're gated. So these were not set up to do what I'm about to do which is bevel this outer edge. Not the lower, but the top edge that everyone sees. And that one's less important, but... Actually, it's very hard to see my selected edges. I think you can... There's a display setting in Maya where the selected edges are bolder. That would be helpful. But it's even for like these now. Oops. For the... Oh no, oh no. Actually, it's so low poly, it's fine. I'll just grab it by hands. So, so like if I if I start to bevel these pieces, it starts pushing it closer to like how Final Fantasy Remake is is, is authored, where you're you're like almost half doing a smooth over the whole mesh. You're like halfway towards putting the subdivision surface in the game, which I'm sure we're gonna get to that point. But uh, now the question is, do I do the, I've decided to do the inner edges of this. Do I also do the inner edges of this one? I guess I'm going to look at it. So controlling this bevel here. And then if we're going to do that, then you almost need to control the whole other side too. It, it becomes, it, I don't know, it, it gets harder to rig. It gets harder. It becomes a different UV exercise, but I'm considering Okay, so if we do those, we have to do the corners too, but it's kind of seeing like if the in-game mesh should have a bevel at this point, like here, like not not a full subdivision surface bevel, but like something like that. It'll help hold the, um, what you basically get is that if this is supposed to be rounded, this face, especially when you bake onto it, 
will pick up a big reflection through here. And if you don't have it, it's kind of like you're really holding, hoping the normal map holds that together. And when you're up close like this with a metahuman whose head is like, it's way more dense than this. With like all this detail and whatnot, and you look at the clothes and the clothes looks like it's from like, you know, well, Fantasy, Final Fantasy 14. It's like, eh, kind of doesn't hold up. So you start having to make like steps closer and closer to the subdivision level where it would look like that in the game, which in game models don't look like this. It's like cinematic level. But it complicates things later. And then we're, we're baking a whole lot into it. But I would take this and then gate. And then it would come out like, once we gate it, it'll be more like ZBrush looks like this. But the in-game model would be that with probably a little bit more rounding. Yeah, I don't know. Like this isn't meta. Like this shoulder piece is like if this was going in the game. Like this faceting doesn't look so great with the meta humans. That being said, if I just subdivide this, it's not really gonna do what I want either. So let me undo out those bevels. I don't think that bevel is gonna be how we do it. It might just. Oh shit! How far back is that bevel? There we go. It might just be gating with one subdivision or something like that because otherwise it's not going to smooth mm. so this one's a lot easier to round but like this one is like um kind of a different story so this is a dupe right i think i still have the base top over this somewhere i hope yeah just trying to plan for the final topology you know what i can always re I can, I'm going to go super high poly and I can always retopo the amount of topology I want back onto it. I think that's, I think that's a fine approach for it. I won't commit to it just yet here. So we'll just get this thing ready for, uh, for sculpting and then it'll come out like perfectly smooth. And then I'll retopo how much topology back I want. Cause I think I want double this, but if I smooth it now, it's going to fuck up the shape. So we'll just do it that way. So I don't think this edge is needed. I think this was part of the construction. So we'll delete that edge out and then we'll box, we'll, we'll gate this thing back in. Yeah, and I'll, I'll probably gonna retopple this piece like really specifically later from uh, after we ZBrush it. Okay, edge loop. So this is leather, big leather, but it's it's leather so we're not super tight edge like if it was metal but that being said this is a pretty definite border here and then the inner parts chain mail which i might try doing that in zbrush but if i'm not going to bring it back in the game i might as well just do it in substance painter i found some new substance painter chain mail we'll see how it goes Now, how much do we care about these edges? They kind of have to be held too. Same thing here, oops. So I didn't hold the edge on that side, so it's gonna get a little round there. Let's see. Hmm, what's this? Oh my god. Is this not welded? How come this didn't loop through? Fuck. What's up with this? I'll have to redo all that. Huh, why isn't this looped? Um, hmm. I mean, no. That's going to just cause more and more problems. And then it could break the bake later. Because this is not a fit. This is not a Okay, fuck. I have to undo this whole thing. It'll script the baking long term if I allow something like that to happen. What? Is this not welded? Why is that not an edge loop? What was that? What is this? Is this not considered a face loop? What the? That's. Oh, it dies right here. Oh, shit. 
what did I do? Oh man, this object would have been so simple if I had just extruded it while it was a, a freaking plane. Now I'm like in like reconstruction hell. Crap, why isn't this a loop? What is this? Is this not merged? This, is this two verts? It's not, I said. What is this? Yo, how about this? How come that's not an edge loop? No. Okay, I screwed myself with this piece. It's so close though. I don't want to have to do anything funny, but you can't bring in like weird faces like that into Painter and it's going to throw off if I ever ZR mesh this or something, it's going to completely break it. Shit. Uh, what's the issue? Okay, I got to fix this. I got to make this thing a loop. Um. Oh. I think I needed. I think this needs faces all the way around, right? Because otherwise, this is gonna start. If I start cutting into this, I oh, fucked this object. Um, hmm. I don't know. I probably have the planes. I think if I go back far enough, I do have the construction of this. Okay, so I I, I pretty much broke this. Like to fix this would be a lot of manual work. It'd be easier just to do it again. From the bases, though. I'd like to have this came out, but oh. Uh, Okay, so what are these things called? Poly, is it this? Oh, let's get out of solo. Where is everything? There you are. So the question is, do we have the like the low poly topo of those things? I think we do. Nope, 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 fuck. <laughs> Bolt, I should have, uh, Damn, I really went like right into this. No. Oh no, there they are. Okay, I got them. Here we go. I need these back. These ones. Get to this again. Poly cylinder. Gimme. I could have gone back, back, back in the Maya file and imported it into. So I was eventually gonna find it, but Okay, so we have to do this again. Looks like I've had modified these a bit too, because like this is like uh shoulders low poly so the idea is to extrude this and keep it perfect double-sided quads the whole time or else uh the gating goes poorly and then it'll uh it won't go into z rush properly is what's gonna happen so let's see how good this can be in component mode not bad I don't remember what was happening here. What's this? Does it average it? Hmm. Interesting. Even the edge has the normal. That's nice. Ooh, asymmetrical. That's fine. We're going to delete the other half. Um, I don't know if I did much more modeling. I think I probably did, but we're going to make this thing pretty thick is what's going to happen. So... You know what? Actually, I think things got thicker. I think I might have thickened things in general. I should have done that whole top part and edges. That was a too fast to do it in faces. Okay. I'm not super happy with, with that, but... I'll take it. Okay, so the better move for these pieces I don't know how this wasn't an issue here. I guess I'm not looping. I'm not relying on this looping all the way through and whatnot. This just ends at the collar. Hmm. And I did kind of pull these loops in. Oh, okay. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so the, let's do this. So the better construction style is going to be, actually I kind of need to see the model, is to extrude it here. I, I pulled, I like quadded it and then extruded it, but we want to extrude first. We want to give like its base object, like tang, like we could always, oh no, you can't invert that, Never mind. In, in ZBrush you could do this and just invert it, but uh, Maya only wants you to go one direction. Hmm. So what's nice about this is that is one centimeter. That's kind of nice to be able to say that. 
Oh, it's not capped on the back. What? It doesn't cap the back when you do this? What program am I thinking about that it would have capped it? Well, we're going to go bridge it then. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. So let's do... Let's take these. I hope they're not extruded already. They are. So we got to go back, back, back. At least I knew that. Stuff like that is also very sad when you find out later. You try to bring it into Painter and it's like you have crazy geometry. Go redo everything. This extrude and we'll, it's nice to do it parametrically, so like one centimeter. And we're gonna maybe back extrude later. Oh no, we won't. Actually, we're gonna fix it all right here. One centimeter seems fine to me. See how bad two would be. That's too much. 1.5. Nah, they're pretty thin. Let's just say one. Even one's a little bit video gamey. But we want to hold the reflection mostly when I bevel this edge if I do. Okay, then I gotta go fix the backs of these. I, I for some reason, wait, wait, they have backs. Wait, now they have backs. Anyway, this is what we want. We need this um, or else you can't loop through. You're gonna end up with end guns. And end guns is the opposite of how we want to do this. Okay, cool, nice. So that's that should have been step one. Like treat the simple object and keep it simple, keep it hold. Step one of thickness is think of the simple object first. Don't don't add details and then thicken it. That's that's, that's hard. Okay, crap. I got to go back and do all this edge looping shit now. Okay, so I kind of just do this by eye at this point. Just like however thick I think is gonna look good. So the thing is like, this is looping all the way under now. That's the topology we needed to keep this thing quads. Like uh, all these workflows basically rely on super tight, perfect quad quads. Going to ZBrush, going to Painter, generating LODs, all that stuff. It's like, it's almost procedural if you keep it all in quads. Yeah, this was the way to do this. Yeah, super fucked that up. Okay, this one. Edge. Just eyeballing the padding, the piping. And I just eyeballed this like kind of halfway point. Nope. Not quite. You could probably slide them, but I'm just going to keep doing that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now these pieces are properly thickened and have loops on the back uh, that are quads. So this will all keep working out pretty nice. And now the extrusions and then the gating. Gating the extrusions. Okay. Almost want to save it at this point. I'm going to just duplicate this because this could probably go wrong. Let me go this one. Okay, so let's do the extrudes and then the gating. Yeah, I could definitely see myself screwing up the gating. D -d 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 -d. Oh no. Also, selecting the back face. Oh my, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're already. Let's start over. So this will loop all the way through. Yeah, we don't want to extrude the bottom, so. Wow. Just gotta go slow. Oh, I can use tab. Tab will do it. Yes, tab is the move. Tab won't do back face selections. Yeah, so just much more of this workflow was Maya. At least for something like this. Oh no. There we go. Did we select any weird back faces? I can't hit control one. I should have hit control one a long time ago. Oh well, we'll just hope that we didn't select anything crazy. Yeah, so piping here is much nicer than, than ZBrush. So I guess some people don't. You you can't you to finish into a game model you need ZBrush. I mean you need Maya or Max or Blender. So you kinda have to have it. Thickness. Okay, so we can at least do this parametrically now. Is 0.5 gonna be too much? 
I kind of you kind of want this silhouette breakup. So less than that is kind of small. So the pad itself is one thick, and then this is going up half. Because you want this like breakup smaller than that, it's gonna look kind of like too small, I think. I think that's pretty good. So if we had to parametrically do this again, it's one centimeter for the pad, 0.5 for the body, for the, the piping. I think that looks pretty good. And then we have to gate this. And so now at this point, we can start to lose this edge around the this. And let's just make sure we're still in quad world. Yeah, so this, see now we have perfect corners. Yeah, yeah, so now the gating should go better. So I should be able to take this edge, control backspace, the equivalent edge on this one. This is like a construction edge like that. And that's perfect quads now for these pieces. Yeah, okay. Then it's just properly gating them. And hopefully this, hopefully this phase goes correctly now because everything's quads. Edge loop tool. So we got to keep in mind this is leather. If it's metal, we want to be like like right in there. But leather's like kind of pull it back a little bit. Let it get pillowy and round. This one's almost like half. I could probably almost get away with half of it. But we'll we'll try to make squares though. Box squares like this. And it's looping all, all the way under. So this is going to get a little intense, a little tight down there, but that's what it's still fine. I'm glad I caught this before I went to ZBrush. That's kind of demoralizing. Here, we'll hold that. Did I do this side? Nope. We'll hold this one. And I think that's probably it. That's a lot of stuff going on here. It feels like too much, to be honest, but let's see. Not that's it. We're actually missing some. We don't have enough, but that feels good. That's gonna nice clean ZBrush base to put to sculpt into. There's a something's weird here. Uh, I guess we need a loop there. It's a lot. This seems like too many, but uh, it's it looks good, so that's all that really matters. We hold it there. We're letting this corner go pretty pretty round, but. Even our like subdivisions are pretty square, which is good. like this. It's tight. There's a lot of stuff there, but at least they're square. Like they're not going to pull into like a weird direction. Yeah, that's pretty. That's a good base. It's pretty nice. A little wobbly. Okay, let's do this one. I'm going to need to like ISO it though to get in here. But yeah, you gotta have these like, oh, wait, no. Oh no, I didn't extrude this. Oh my God. Oh my God. I didn't extrude the middle and I just did all that gating. I don't know if there's a way to get back. Fuck. Okay, well, that's not the worst. I just get to practice gating. I didn't extrude this piece. Is there any way to undo that kind of stuff? Not really. Hmm. I don't even know if I have that many undo levels. That was a lot of that was a lot of cuts. Can I get back all the way to the extruding? Oh, there it is. Okay, go back. Damn. Okay, Jesus. I should have done these separately. It would have saved me, but I'm not gonna learn from that lesson and still do them all at once. Uh, okay, that seems fine. And we did 0. 0.5. That seems fine. Sad. What are we doing? We're bevel extruding. Okay, once again. Much gating. Here we go.
looks like it. Yeah, it's, the LA is, gets bumpy here, but it's because I just didn't keep the keep the cylinder. I started pushing edges a little bit, but I will keep it. It's fine. It's leather. It, it, we can actually like come in like malform it a little bit to make it look less metal. But uh, okay, so that looks fine. Let's get this piece. This one's a little bit more, a little denser. But uh, again, leather, leather, leather. So we want to keep these like pretty loose, even letting this go to the middle. Ooh, this one has smaller piping than the other one. Because I did them by hand. That one already has the loop somehow. Okay, it's missing this one. This one. Here. Oh, it loops like all the way around the object. Makes sense. Okay, uh, this is missing these. This one. That's gonna be like a little too loose, but I don't wanna start making it. I wanna keep these like subdivisions kind of the same. Or else they're gonna triangulate funny. I could put like extra edges in the middle. I think I probably should. Though we want this surface to be pretty smooth overall. So to do the final check, we gotta turn this off. Looks good, no weird pulling under here. It's perfect. Okay. Same with this one. Yeah, that's that's a yeah. There's I used to try to do the piping and ZBrush it. It would never come out looking like that. It always become like too too hand painted too quickly. And then we can always like shape this a little bit later now. Okay, so those pieces are pretty perfect. Um, hooray! Let's save as. Those took longer than I thought. Seven. Yeah, this is how they're gonna look at ZBrush when I high poly them, basically. Kind of want to do some material stuff to this stuff here. Um, let's see, is this the base armor? Is this gonna look good like that? Then on the straps, I'm going to make the metal parts metal or dark. So all the things, that, well, those are leather, but just to help look at the contrast and the silhouettes of it, that looks pretty damn smooth. That's pretty good. Now the back, I haven't been back here too much, but uh, it's pretty nice. So this will go beat up and it becomes leather, add stitching, and this just gets a texture in a... Uh, Substance painted to be chainmail, or we micro poly, we ZR mesh it, and uh, hope that the, the the loops all stay nice together. And then you replace like the. I'd have to bring this in. I would select it in here and make this a poly group, and then you would add, you duplicate it and do micro poly mesh chainmail over it. But I can't imagine rigging chainmail to the shoulder. It might work, like if it was actually mesh. It's probably too much. The, 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 the shoulder piece alone would be like the topology of like the, the amount of polys of like the whole body. If I did that, if you actually three model all the chainmail out, not gonna be worth it yet. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's duplicate this so we know what we're looking at. Shoulders low poly. These are now shoulders like, uh, not low poly. I don't know what to call these. They're like subdivision basically. These are subdivision ones. We're going to go X negative. Yeah, we're basically subdivision modeling at this point, like traditional VFX modeling. So the straps, really happy with these. These are going to keep working out. Um, you know, I probably could have let the corners of this go a little bit more around. Looking at this now, like, and we could just bring them in. 
Uh, this gating is a little aggressive on this edge here. Kind of subtle, but they seem very square. Too square. So those are little details to work on after maybe. So the next thing would be, I think, to start thickening these straps. Oops. Thicken these, these, these. It's going to be all the same process. Much less work than the other ones. Uh, box them up, get them sub, sub demodeled, and add the buckles. And this one does have that detail of uh, having a strap under it. So it's basically like big flat leather ones and then a belt over the big flat leather ones. And this one also has a whatever. Basically just put one of those there, form it to it. Same kind of with the, this is a belt over it. So thickening it. How long has this one been? Oh, this is only 2.40. What time is it? 2.30. Okay. Kind of have like an hour. But uh, yeah, pretty the armor Maya. <laughs> Just like, the, I guess some of this has started off in uh, this piece. I'm still pretty happy to generate from loop selects kind of out of... Uh, Out of ZBrush, but then again, I came in here and I completely retopologized it to have sub D, to have this sub D pattern on the collar. I don't know. I I kind of think for stuff that's not organic, like a monster, like a sculpting, like the body, like the muscles, you just skip that and you just come right in here. So I don't know. I kind of think that like almost all of this, sh and then I made this in my in Maya too. I don't know, just less and less a ZBrush. And the ZBrush is really just for like the painting phase as far as it comes to like hard armor. And executing a suit wouldn't be all that different than this either. Like this is a suit, this could turn into a suit. I just make the collar here and split it down the middle. I don't know, I just feel like more and more of this I do in Maya. Let's look at the, cause I want this like kind of perfect stuff and then we go make it imperfect in a ZBrush. Yeah. So I'm going to do, let's do these straps, I guess. I mean, the I could do the belt, but again, the most important ones are these. So let's work on, let's do these hair straps. I am going to do the extra belt detail. Might as well just do it. I, I probably am going to make a lot of content with this guy when it's all rigged up. Um, so it's, it's worth getting that look. It'll feel better to have like all the details. And then I could, tech, I could maybe put bones in here and have these things kind of move. Because so far this model's not going to have any like fun secondary animation stuff on it. It doesn't have like a belt or I mean a cape or anything like that. But I could always add like an add-on hood or something like that to it later. It does wear that. Okay, so we're looking at, we're going to hide this one. I'm going to clean this file up. How about that? Let's clean this thing up. And then I'm going to start working on the loops. But the, right now it's like kind of a disaster in here. Export, no, no. Let's do a file. I wonder if you can convert MLTs to M MA files what if I upgrade to Maya. You must. I guess I could just do it through uh, FBX. Yeah, so let's just clean this up and get things into the right place. So this is like history or something. I don't know what to call it. This is like old stuff. Uh, we're kind of don't need it, but it, it had some stuff in there that I kind of wanted to keep. Let's make a group called these two are going to go into like details eh. they're like the construction you know they're at like the origin let's keep those in there shoulders low poly i think is the actual one we're using now so these are i'm gonna call these shoulders uh sub d basically with the guild what kind of guild I just shared this video in the fabricant discord oh okay yeah fabricant yeah i talked to a couple people from that from that company Use a guild. What guild? What game? Or is this like a IRL guild? How intrigue. I'm going to make a folder called uh, SubD, which is basically I'm going to send the SubD stuff to ZBrush. Everything gets SubD'd at this point. We're going VFX High Poly. That's not exactly what I was expecting out of this at all. Here's the chest. Chest. Upper, sub D, into here. What's this? The boots! Didn't even name them. These need to get remeshed in ZBrush, so 
or retoppled here. Oh, these are these are not them though. But I'm gonna say boots. These are nothing basically. Chest. We have a bunch of old chest pieces. What's this? Those are garbage. And those are garbage. So this is like garbage, but I'm just gonna say bin for now. Garbage. Details. Boots. Oh yeah, let's start naming. Okay, so these are pants. Low poly. Also need to be retopologized. Uh shirt. Low poly. A little bit too high. Need to kind of be remeshed. Uh belt. Waist. Uh, chest lower. Oh, we're gonna have to do some modeling on that one. And here we are. We're gonna say belt, chest, under, and belt, chest, over. Okay, so let's make a folder for all of these low polys that are gonna, we're up resing now, basically. But what I should have done, had I organized this earlier, is always kept the low polys in their own folder and we just duplicate over it. Oh, I can call these low poly. So I could always come back to it should I screw up the uh, the thickening process, which I did on the shoulders. If you don't organize this stuff. What's this? That's like a chest. That's like a trash chest. I need that. What's this? This is the body. Okay. This is MH body um, quad. This, is, this got quadded out though, so we'll just leave that open. That's a remesh. Uh, low poly, pants low poly. Okay, so we have, oh no, that went to sub D. Okay, so the goal is to convert these low polys into sub D thickened ones that are perfect quads. Sub D kind of implies perfect quads. <laughs> meaning that they will uh, smoothen ZBrush perfectly. Uh, and then kind of the nice part about sub-D modeling is that they can also turn into the low poly, the, or like, we'll say the game mesh that gets rigged to the skeleton. So there's like multiple versions of these. And then these are details, which there'll be lots of. There's going to be even more. And we basically went directly into high, into high poly with these. But we're going to have sh these same straps go under here, and there's probably like at least one on the hand, I'd imagine, and there's definitely one on the on the belt, on the shoes, as many as you want. So, yeah, I, I think based on all of this, it's like you you just go straight to your DCC. You know, the zebra stuff is is like I don't know. I think if you're like extremely good at ZBrush, it's it's fine to concept there with low poly, but it, it's it's a pain in the ass. Like you can't select a vert. You just can't select anything. And I don't know. Here you just have the right tools. And all I would do is I'm basically going to sub D model this entire character, like VFX style. And then um, we just send it to ZBrush for like beating it up and making some high poly stuff. The Club Crypto Gaming Guild. We're the largest guild in Star Atlas. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I've been watching with the. I've very loosely been following Star Atlas. Are they integrating NFTs now into. Uh, are they even upgrading to five? I've lost track of what they're doing. Eve Online. Oh, okay. Fabricant made some of our crew gear clothing items for Star Atlas. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, it's a small world. It's a small world. I has found. I'm trying to limit the small talk on these streams because I kind of want to leave them up. Though this workflow, I've, again, kind of been a bit wandering and learning. But uh, yeah, there's been a lot of action in the crypto side of things at the moment. I'm going to hide this low poly. And uh, yeah, this strip I'm going to now duplicate. Keep a nice copy. We're going to move it into the sub D folder. And we're going to try to get this thing into sub D mode. Sub D. So let's see. Are we modeling the inner or the outer? We want to model the skin tight version. So we're modeling the inner and we're going to extrude out. We want this to be double to full thick, like a full object like these are. And we're sub D modeling for ZBrush. There's all these like different mindsets for like modeling stuff, but this is like for ZBrush. 
Okay, we're in component, which is nice. So this moves kind of like uh, the way that we modeled this originally. Oh, what the fuck? I'm moving the wrong piece. Okay, oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I never hid the original. This one. There we go, okay. Got to play that game correctly. I could do this in layers too at this point, but anyway. So a couple issues, even with the low poly, um, not enough subdivisions starts to get a little bit towards rectangles here. Not good. So I should probably come in and we just got to shape this better. Um, kind of like pick what, like what our base subdivision square should look like. So say we want to say it's like this. And again, I was trying to do this in ZBrush and it just, I, I just don't like it as much there. And basically come and reform this entire one and try to keep like consistent squares and do it in object space. Cause we kind of have, we kind of have the right like depth from the ZBrush phase of it, but uh, it was just too hard to keep it even. But basically if you don't do this correctly, it doesn't look like leather connect so while we're still in like the very low poly phase just get this shape like perfect and then we're just detailing but like at this point once you do this to it you can't change the shape of it very easily and then obviously once you go back to zbrush you're kind of committed to that topology as far as it reliably going back into the uh the low poly because i'm planning on just taking this and stripping out the geo for the low poly not doing a full retopo if i can avoid it but we'll see how much, how crazy I get in ZBrush. The more you change it in ZBrush, the more I just have to completely regenerate it later. Okay, so I kind of need to see this one, but uh. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, fuck. Look at this. What happened back here? Luckily, it's just does a quad ship, so. But the danger is like you like model past the point of undo history and you've like done all this shit to it. It's not good. So I'm going to trust the X axis in this point and just hope that it's like kind of in the right place. but I can fix it later. Mm. Nope. Okay, so this is still needs to be like here. Okay, yeah, and then clearly we need like, yeah. oh, what the, I beveled those. Hmm. Connect. So the problem, not the, but like the, the difference with like this kind of workflow though is that like we get no auto shaping, like it's not like, I guess we could make this live on the chest. I don't really want to do that anymore. But we could be making, we could be painting this as a quad draw. Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, you know, the, I'll have the opportunity to try that here when I make the straps for this. When I was doing this in ZBrush, I was like, I should just quad draw this in Maya. Why am I fighting this topology tool? So this is kind of, this process is unfortunately just kind of dealing with what I was doing in ZBrush, but didn't end up enjoying all that much. The fitting. I'm also just less practiced with my tablet from like years of not using it. So when I'm just trying to like move something, you know, you have to have the hand-eye coordination to hit the right part of the screen and that's even a little bit messy for me. And I'm left-handed and right-handed. So it ends up being this like kind of conflict later. Or as I'm doing the process, like I'm holding the mouse and the tablet together. And then they kind of I end up making like mistakes, like mechanical mistakes. Whereas I don't make mouse mechanical mistakes very often. So I'm just generally worse at ZBrush. So we're going to pull this. It's even okay if it does this because we're going to extract out, but I'm trying to like kind of pull it out to generally leave it here because we're going to extrude out, which I think that's the move when you're doing tight fit stuff is you want to do the inner and the extrude out. 
or else you get huge gaps like I have here, which is I'm not going to fix that at the moment. So kind of learning, just continuing to like learn about my own process about how to do this. But definitely I would model the tight part and then extrude out versus I like tried to model like the gap that's here. It doesn't make sense. So like, cause it's, it's okay to do this if you're going to extrude out cause this is like representing it squishing into the body. So let's see if I can finish this all around. Oh my God, what am I, what is this? This is, I'm like, I can reconstruct that like really easily, but I'm like messing that up. It's not good. I'm probably, uh, that's what's happening. I'm, I'm selecting through. Okay. So just to be a little bit more mindful about this. So let's do from here, connect. I should be quad drawing. That's what should be doing. What should be happening right now. I should be quad drawing and then be try to get the topology perfect there because like it's just like not it's just this is very slow this is like the I should have quad drawn this whole thing oh well I'll quad draw the belt on top of it cool about the fabric and I was asking them like what kind of stuff they've been producing can try not to do too much political small talk but they talked to a lot of fashion people in the nft 3d avatar space we connect yet here I am making my own clothing Quadra, one hundred percent quadra. This, this is this is my punishment for not quadrawing. So I have to do this because this is like a much nicer process if you just start the whole thing in a quad. Yeah, and I have to fix all this. I'll just extrude out. I'm just, I'm gonna probably delete the other belt. I'm gonna probably delete all these belts and quadra it just again, just way cleaner. And especially because I have this nice smooth sub D model to kind of work against. Ooh, well actually, well quadra, quadra is gonna pull off the low poly, so I'm gonna have to smooth it or something. The workflow continues to change. I'm gonna have to smooth a copy of it to live draw against, because otherwise I'm pretty sure we're gonna be, but then do you want a quadra against that? Hmm. I know uh, Woof Woof Wolf just has been modeling like the Master Chief and he did the entire thing in Maya. So I'm pretty sure that workflow is the way. Okay, yeah, fuck this basically. Like this has been like a waste of time. I should have uh, should have just quad drawn this thing from the beginning. And now even, even like doing this is kind of a waste. I should just remodel it completely from scratch. Like hopefully I didn't delete anything from the front. Yeah, I should have quad drawn this. This is an absolute mistake to do it this way. We're gonna redo the straps. I'm like, why am I hanging on to these like really basic quad strips? It just wasn't worth it. Yeah, they're like way off too. Like they're like not even. I'm I'm like very close to just starting this strap over from scratch too, but already on the back. And I think something important to get as close as possible is the right quad quad topology in this phase too. Otherwise you have to just come back and redo it. So you might as well just get it right on the first the first time you try to draw it on there. Which I think is easier to do in oh I'm losing the the shape. Easier to do in, in Maya. Oh I lost I wasn't paying attention to the shape. It's supposed to look like this. Ooh I think we're rotating in a different space, but I'll take it. Quadra on the high poly sub D model next time. Oh, I'm about to go do that in like one second. I, I, once I mesh that, once I high poly this one, I'll, uh, I'm going to do that. 
again. This is supposed to be like right up against it, which again, live draw would have just done for me. Claw draw. At least I found this component normal thing. It's working out pretty nicely. Thanks. Okay, good enough. Good enough. So that's the strap. It's kind of like against the body. We could probably push it in a little bit more. But uh, that's okay. Uh, we know. Uh, yeah, I should probably think about that. Hmm. Is that going to be an issue? Like the thing is, is like if it, if I leave it kind of like unresolved, and I thicken it, and then I rig it, it's like in some world, pan, some shoulder pose, this might like pop out, and it's like, oh, that's a sad moment because I'll be like mocapping at that point. Yeah, there's a decent chance that like this shoulder pad moves up, revealing that this strap is like going into nowhere. Hmm. That would want to be solved now. Okay, so that is a trade-off between how low I've put this shoulder pad, because this kind of comes into here, but it's kind of low, so it's like, where the hell is this attaching? Hmm. Well, it's something I'll have to keep in mind as I rig this stuff. I've never, I haven't rigged anything like this detail yet to the metahuman, so gonna be a lot of learning on this, this one. Well, okay, it's a little wobbly and flobbly all over the place, but I'm gonna extrude it. I think you can extrude the whole object, is that right? I almost never do it that way. Yeah. So these are a little bit on the thinner side, which I guess we're talking in like actual measurements here. 0 0.5. 0 0.5 seems about right. That's how much I extruded these little pieces that were leather too. And then it kind of comes down to, okay, this is shaped like ass down here, but kind of comes down to like, uh, If I'm going to, ooh. It's too dangerous just like that way. Oh no. If I'm going to model into the base mesh, uh, the roundness of these, like, the, would it show? Not like, would I bevel this in like the actual game mesh? I don't think so. I think I decided that against that on these ones too. Actually, we haven't. I haven't decided what the game topology is going to look like for this. I just know that this is the sculpted one. So basically, we don't care. I don't care yet. We're gonna. We'll decide the game topology after. We just want to model the clean ZBrush topology. That's all that matters. So thinking too far ahead. We'll make that decision at the end, and then once you rig it, it becomes another story, uh, another like negotiation for rigging. Okay, so we'll just box this thing in. Yeah, that. So it's leather. We can let it go like a little bit. Oh, that looped all the way around. So like leather, pro it may not even need this edge here, but we'll we'll check it. We're not gonna ever see the terminations, but just in case, I'm gonna keep them tight. And that should be it for those. Yeah, and smoothing it kind of helps some of like the gross tangency stuff I had going on there. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, so this one has a belt over it. So the question is, if you live draw a subdivision surface, will it stick to it? So I'm going to find that out right now. We'll make this thing live. And if I quad draw on the subdiv surface, it looks like it will. It looks like you could just write on there. That was that's a huge plus if that's true. That's pretty cool. Uh, claw and draw. Am I drawing on the curved surface? I am. Oh, that's that's big power for Maya that you can do that. Okay, I was planning on like smoothing and duplicating it. You can just draw right on the subdivision. That's amazing. Very cool. Okay, so there's just a belt inside of it. And versus like, you know, fighting. I can hide the shoulder pads actually too. So instead of like fighting what I just did, you just draw right on it and then just be a little bit mindful about the topology. Or you could like extract a face out of it. There's lots of ways, but 
I don't know for some reason I feel I just want to test this. Oops, when's the button? Oh, it's tab. Yeah, this is pretty incredible that you can sculpt onto the the sub D model. Now this belt's a little thinner. Nah, it's yeah, it's thinner. Can I grab this whole edge now? So we gotta kinda come back in with all of this. But yeah, this this is like the I'm just I just feel way more comfortable controlling topology and making these decisions in this tool than I do in ZBrush. I don't know why I'm going so low or so high to topo already. I guess it's because I'm keeping this height and then it makes me want to keep squares. So by making thin objects, it's kind of like, but I need to go into like long rectangles or else I'll never finish this. And we don't really need to need to have this many spans. So I should start going double this, like more towards like that length. Like, yeah, like this. So we could basically, well, I should kind of match, like you can see like the underlying cage. I should just match the cage under it. I was going into like, um, like final game topo mode, but that's not what we're doing. Yeah, the subdivision surface should probably, should be able to stick to it, especially because we're like magnet to it right now. And we're gonna thicken this anyway. Yeah, so let's just match the same subdivisions that are under it for now. Just have to turn this edge a little bit. Turn this edge, and yeah, this is this is the this is the full the full Maya. Now, are we really stuck on it? That's what I'm wondering. Like, or am I actually stuck to the low poly? It feels like I'm on the high poly, but I can't. I kind of know after. But yeah, this quad draw on high poly saves so many clicks. Like the other way. Now we start to care less slightly, but I mean, I might as well finish it clean, but there's swords over this. Yeah, quadra. Quadra for life. It's not like perfect, like tangent curvy looking thing, but uh, it's pretty good. And this feels a little low here. It's kind of from the front. It's mostly where it matters here. I think this is under the shoulder pad at this point, but still. Okay, pretty nice. Mostly matching the low poly cage under it. And then, uh, let's see here. Take this whole object and extrude it. 0. 0.5, we did the whole thing. Yeah, 0. 0.5, let's, why not let's try it. It's gonna get smoothed anyway. Hmm. So this piece is pulled away. Interesting. So yeah, I don't really know if it's grabbing onto the poly cage or not, but it's, ooh, what the, f oh, it's still live, hold on. But easy enough to kind of just like sync this stuff back in after. Uh, yeah, it's not perfectly, it's not perfectly sunk to it, but again, huh, it actually looks like it might be on the low poly, but it's if, even if that's the case, it still works quite nicely. Yeah, it's not like actually in there, so I still have to go back it by hand and push these all in. But um, oh well. Okay, so this part. What space are we in? What am I looking at this in? Component space, but it's two component space, so it's two. Mm, I don't know. I guess it's it's gonna average them. I have two verts selected. Okay, so uh, the belt is awkwardly here and awkwardly overlapping with this, so it's kind of like, uh... 
that's pretty messy looking, but let's see how it looks. So let's take one of these buckles, this one. They're both UV'd, so generally I don't have to do too much over again. Duplicate this, just, just whatever, three, this thing. So we want to be working in object space. True, yet yeah, definitely. Work. I just gotta thicken everything to kind of match. And this final placement will be kind of based on like how we end up doing like the other, like it's pretty safe if I start tucking it way back here, basically. Like the further down this way, cause I'm gonna put the sword one there. I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll kind of have to sort it out once I do like the sword belt. Hardest part is just gonna get this thing oriented correctly to the, we'll just do this face right here, this one. There's probably some cute way of like dancing around some normals and selecting the face and getting the perfect tangent for this, but doing it by hand is kind of okay. Oh no. This one, and it's pretty on there. Pretty close. Okay, and then we just gotta scale the whole thing to make it kind of fit. Like, if I scale this to be kind of the size of it, it's like that. And so, I think, let's see, how would this be? So, like, we're not gonna use this, right? You don't see that. And we don't, I don't think we need this part. I'll just start by hiding. I had I'd hard deleted the other piece. Kind of like that. And then this has to kind of like sneakily turn into this belt piece. So, huh. And do you see a buckle on that? I can't tell. I'll just hide it for now. It's easy to go add that back in, but this is this piece. And so there's a couple ways of going about that. I could try to like sneak, I could try to just sneak the transition here. But at the end of the day, we have to go to Substance Painter and make this all one continuous piece of mesh anyway. So, what probably makes the most sense to try to do is merge them at this vert line right here. So take these two pieces and turn them into one piece here, which should be pretty relatively easy. So we should be able to take this out, this out. Whoa, whoa cra crazy selection. Oh, no, that kind of almost worked. And then uh, I guess for now we'll just delete this piece. I can always bring it. I can always make something similar to it after, and just kind of like revert, like target weld these together. Let's see if I can remember how to use the target weld tool. So first we got to merge these together. Is that this? Yeah. Here's to go bye bye. And remember how to use the target weld tool. Click. Oh, you like drag, right? Oh, it's like that. Okay. Okay, so now they're technically one piece because we kind of need the UV them together is the main thing. And then we'll just kind of come and clean this up. Oh, that, that tangent's in crazy world, so we'll just switch back to world space. But let's see what we're dealing with out here. Okay, so we'll pull this one back into here, basically, and kind of remodel it. And this is a little bit pulling funny. What's up with this? So we'll just kind of... Oops, what the hell was that? I should have grabbed the face under it too, probably. Nah, it's still okay. This just needs to, this needs to go under, like very definitely go under this piece. So it's pretty close. So we can always pull the buckle actually. Um, it still has proper object space on it. We can actually do this, like that, a little bit more. Oh, and this is actually, slightly up and the angle is a little funny. And so we kind of have to re do that modeling I did to that other end of the buckle. Oh, okay, so now looking at this, I could have kept the end of the buckle and then merged it back in because it was all UV'd and more importantly modeled correctly, but okay, next time I do a belt, I know how to merge those pieces back together. But for now, I'm just gonna kind of cheese this. 
So it kind of doesn't matter. You end up having to re-UV the damn the belt piece anyway. But the buckle, at least, I'm not going to have to re-UV every time. And that's on, like, who the... Oh, that's on world. Is component good? Yeah, component still feels good. So I'll just do this. It's fine. That scaling is on whose axis object roof component. Oh, no. So we're not rotated. We're not matching the, the angle of the belt even closely. No, we won't go all the way, actually. So this is just like, just like shove it in there. Oh my God. And whose axis is this object component? I need this like right, like gigantic and right there. Or actually there might be a hot box versus there. Oh no. There might be like a control shift or something, or is it just shift, alt shift, control shift. Space. There might be a hot box version of this in Maya. There probably is. I'll try to find that. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is a little bit crazy. What space? Component space. That's a nope. Just take world. Yeah, I could probably take an extra subdiv right there. Though it might smooth okay. But uh, yeah, there's the the holding belt. So we'll we could come in like. Give this a bit more gravity. Actually, I think this one has a loop. So this one actually adds the other direction. This comes more form-fitting to the body. Oh, what the fuck? Component? No? Components like this? Hmm. Okay. World object, and they're all bad. There's no way to rotate that object. We have to move it by vert. Never mind, I'll do that later. Uh, okay, so I do kind of want that extra the detail here. So, what's going to be the easiest way to deal with this? I think if we basically start taking edges out, I'll have easier control. Okay, the verts are still in there. Okay, hold on, we got it. It's control backspace in Maya. Deletes the verts too. Yeah. make this thing like a much simpler object that's probably enough and we probably don't need this edge to describe it either yeah we'll just push this down like that okay uh it's definitely gonna lose its like leather feel pretty quickly but we'll try to rotate it back into space oh my god what are we working in world yeah might as well just stay in world oof oof okay so this if had i known that this was going to be um flush against it, I would have just, I would not have done this. But we'll get it back. What space am I working in right now? World. Oh, this is world, huh? Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize that this was gonna be flat or else I would have not taken that like big floppy one. Now the tangents are all crazy in here. Yeah. This is world. Okay, I see. I would have just taken the belt because it's I could just quad draw this like right flat to it, but I didn't plan ahead far enough when I was moving things around. What's up, Woody Davis? Came for the title. Oh yeah, what is it? Thick? Yeah, we we're thickening all the polys is basically what's up. I think it would be cool if this guy was standard industry jargon. A thick pass on the assets? That's what it is. It's hull. You can call it shelling, hulling, thickening. That's what it should be called. I'm make of the Witcher. It's going to take me all month probably, but uh, that's what my brain feels like doing. And then I'm going to mocap the Witcher a whole bunch. Gonna start recording mocap, do some cleanup. Hopefully, avoid needing ZBrush, uh, not ZBrush, uh, Motion Builder, but uh, it's kind of inevitable. We'll see though. It's kind of, I've been trying to not record stuff in mocap and do cleanup because there's like new tools coming for Unreal Engine. So I would want, I would rather those, but they're not here yet. And I wanted to finish them. So I might have to go into the Motion Builder. World, I might try using some Maya HIK stuff too, but it's not as good. 
what the hell space is this yeah I, i've pre I've pretty much ruined the end of the belt unfortunately because of the way that i decided to move this stuff around so cry i'll redo it if i have to yeah and so once you once you irreparably mess it up like i've done here you now like component space doesn't work and we have this awful looking belt end which is like too bad yeah i ruined all the tangents and everything it doesn't even feel like a full piece anymore oh man this came out so bad i see that was part of it it's like the more clever you are with the construction the less um like actual 3d modeling you have to do but uh i wasn't clever so I have to fix everything by hand. Like in, in a certain way too, it's like I can never get this as perfect as, the, as like it should be for being planar. But uh, you know, it's still a belt buckle and doesn't don't have to get it perfect, perfect. But uh, if it can be, I'd rather it be. Okay, so this one has another detail that I haven't modeled yet, which is like the the little hold, holder downy thing. Definitely the thick pass, yeah. Thick pass for life. Gets a little thin there, there's some issues, but once you smooth it, it's like, it's not that big a deal. Okay, so what's gonna be the easiest way? The easiest way to make this buckle is probably to take or this holding down thing. Oh, it's one object now, look at that, cool. Um is to take this face. So I'm just gonna duplicate this, solo it, and delete everything but this face, and then just start from there. Cause it's kind of like in the right direction already. So let's see if I can do that. So we'll take this and kind of pray that this piece has like the right kind of like angle baked into it already. We'll see how it goes though. So let's see, it's, oh, well, first of all, it's, where's the tangent, where's the, oh no, where's the, uh, no, 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 okay, it's pretty good. Let's check out its component space. That's what's gonna make this slightly easier for us because it's not in like a global, it's not in like a group. So it doesn't really have any idea where, like belt, belt spaces, basically. If we're talking like control rig, oh no, okay, yeah. Yeah, why would it? It wouldn't, it doesn't know about its, um, it's just averaging the four points. It doesn't have like a proper space baked into it. Ugh. Oh, and then the rotations are awful. And it's like, you know, you should construct things that are square, square at the origin, you know, but I'm constructing it like at this angle. So it's like gonna be all awful. But if I start with a plane, it shouldn't be so bad. But anyway, this is like bad construction style. Well, there's a plane kind of at the right angle. So we want to, oh, why am I even starting with the plane anyway? We wanted like, just like, uh, oh, you know what would be good? We could start like here and then it loops around. I should 100% model this a different way. <laughs> Oops. So let's see, do we want to inner extrude or outer extrude this? We're going to outer extrude, hopefully. Yeah, this, this was a wonky ass way to approach this. I don't know why I'm modeling this in space at the moment, but I am. Let's see how this extrude goes. What space when component? find out yeah like that's not a straight extrude but pretty much if we take this now i would maybe bevel this edge first like these two just once like it's a little bit crooked and wonky so i should probably like i like if you tried to model this d and like at this angle it would be a, be a problem but this one's like so simple like almost can pull it off like here and then if we just extrude that out and just accept that like that's pretty bad, <laughs> I should uh, definitely go model this like square on the axis later. But I'm like here, so I'm just gonna do it. So we've been doing 0.5 for the big pieces, so maybe 0.25 is okay for this. Yeah. A, this one. And what axis is this gonna be on? Who knows? Someone's axis. 
Yeah, and then there's no way to move it either, right? Like this thing's world space is crazy. It's like space. Okay, it'll just center it. Yeah, it's centered crazy. Yeah. Ugh. Oh no. Oh no. What's is this component? Let's just go back to world. Let's deal with it. Oh, object. Well, it's not oriented. I could orient the pivot to like the one of the faces. Recording that was the problem. Reconnection successful. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll see. I want. I'm streaming this to YouTube primarily so that I can pull the vod later. So we'll see what happens in that. Yoinks, yoinks, yoinks. What if I scale this? Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, what the hell axis is this? So I could do D. Oh, what is it? There's a way to align it to the face. I don't remember how that is that at all. I'm making this extremely difficult for myself. And if I just modeled this square on the axis, it would have worked out fine. fine. But, oh well, did not do that. Well, that's awful. Okay, there's the little loop, but don't model those things like at an angle like that. It's hard. So, uh, this one's already sub D'd. This one is not. So, let's sub D this one. Are we quads? Hopefully. Looks like quads. Let's do like a real quick one of these guys. Merge. Okay. It's definitely funny in places, but let's just see how it goes into quads or into sub D mode. Oh man, look at the look at the face back here. It's crazy. I'll take it. Let this be a little bit round here. Um I do need to hold this one pretty tight. And so it grabs the D-ring. That's looped away the all the way around. We do want these to be pretty tidy so they don't go like flying off into the into the distance. And I don't know if we really need this, but I'll put one all the way around here and all the way around there. Lost a little bit of, uh, I mean, it always does a little thickness, but we did 0.5. And so once you smooth it, 0.5 is okay. And we could always start pulling it away from it now. Do the same thing to this like awful thing that I've made here. This thing is awful. But uh, I think I am going to include it on the high poly bake. I mean, why not? I could probably let that go full round even. It probably doesn't even need those edges held. But this will hold it. I think this technically wraps around the belt, but we're not going to model that. Yeah, I probably need to hold. Okay, that went around. And is that it? I think that might be it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, okay, where are my shoulder pads? There we go. Pretty cool. I like it. It's coming together real nice. Shading. No. Though we have no normal. There's no normal detail, but we'll get the normal detail on there. It's coming. Uh, for these, I want to round this. I don't like this square. This definitely wants to be a little bit more round and could be asymmetrical too a little bit. <laughs> But uh, cool. So how long has this been? Three twenty. And what time is it? Oh, yeah, three. Okay, I gotta, I gotta pretty much go. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's just switch this to gray, just so I can see the, the, the silhouette of it. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty good. Okay, you know what we're missing is the low poly other one. Where is that? That's that one. <laughs> Look how shitty this is. We're gonna quad draw the other one. That's a piece of garbage garbage approach. Topology tool not so good for this. Um, and then trying to try to salvage that is was a waste of time, and I witnessed that firsthand. I'll just hide this right now because it's sad looking. I mean that's what happens once you start uprising everything and baking normals into it. All the, like this low poly shit looks like garbage. But it's all gonna start somewhere from the design phase. I like it. I think it's coming out pretty nice. Um, full quads makes me feel much better. 
It's going to go into ZBrush pretty nice. Looks clean. Yeah. This is, I'm just much better at getting clean sub-D models out of Maya than I can out of ZBrush. I just have way more control over it. Most of my sub-D modeling comes from Cinema 4D, actually, too. It doesn't even come from Maya, but it's, it's basically right. It's all the same, the same knowledge. Just like slightly different tools. Yeah, much cleaner back here now. Even this collar is pretty good. And we can come like at the very end before we send this off to be, um, well, either high poly or substance painted. We can start, because these are leather, we can start giving it some asymmetry, but it um, doesn't make a massive difference. And the Witcher armor, again, like before we, fi when we finalize this, this right shoulder pad is asymmetrical. It has a pattern that goes like this up to here and then down. So it'll just be like another extrusion. We actually might have to completely reconstruct this piece to get the uh, the other extrusion in there, but um, that's fine as a detail. And it doesn't even like really, really need it. Okay, so this, I consider this pretty successful. Um, definitely relying way more in the Maya space um, because if you don't get these perfect quadded topology pieces at the beginning when you're sculpting it, it doesn't work out. And then it bec then it becomes like a full retopo later, which is still my. But uh, if you can get this type of topology in, in uh, using like the Z modeler and stuff like that, then then that's great. But uh, I have a hard time with it. But uh, so yeah, we thickened this, these, this, and then we kind of made the D rings and stuff like that. And they're uh, thickened, meaning they're like full three D objects compared to game meshes are very commonly just planes that have texture baked onto it. And like, you don't model the backside or even the return side um, until fairly, fairly recent kind of like next gen games or whatever. I guess we're probably past like calling it next gen. Yeah, much tighter in here. I'm still gonna probably keep that edge for like when we fill that way. I kind of like that approach to it too. Okay. So tomorrow, we got to thicken the whole damn thing. Maya's the best? It really is. There's a reason it, there's a reason it costs what it costs. And they're like, if you don't like it, whatever. You know, like, good, luck, good luck building your game studio uh, you know, foundation off of another DCC. Have fun. They're all Maya and some Max. Like all, and then they're starting to share their tools. Like, again, like what Unity purchased from Weta are a ton of Maya tools. They're all Maya tools. You know, like, it's not like they could, it's not like you could um, use those Weta tools without full Maya, right? You need this base. And uh, yeah, Maya did like what Epic's doing and like acquired like all the relevant tools to make this whole thing work together and it works great. And then there's a ton of custom tools too if you uh, go that distance. So tomorrow I continue the thickening. Uh, we'll continue, we'll thicken this piece, which is uh, gonna take a little bit of thought because it is, uh, uh, you know, it's basically leather slices on the side and it's symmetrical. So it's like a front part of chain, back part of chain, and then like probably four, like one, two, one, two, oh, it's actually like, this is like one piece, like one, two, one, two. So it's kind of like four pads that wrap around it with these um, single stitches here and then X stitches there. Those are polygons. We're not gonna put that in the texture. Those are actually 3D meshes in the final. So I'm gonna model those in. Um, and this, this, this bowing here, like this is gonna get 3D modeled out um, on top, like, you know, based on this fit. But I'm going to come model out those those pieces in sub-D modeling. Uh, in the game mesh, we'll kind of see how much I want to keep that in. But at this phase, we need to have these modeled. And then in ZBrush, you come in and up-res and do like sculpt these little folds in. And uh, But the, inserting these little things, I'm going to do that in Maya. I'm not going to do that in ZBrush. In ZBrush, they become like all these sub-tools and it's just an ugly and a nightmare in my opinion. Um, and then it's like very, it's like not as straightforward to apply materials, to do vertex coloring, just basic shit. And it's just much easier in Maya. So I'm going to model out this piece and that's the upper body. That's like the main part of the upper body. Um, this stuff I'm going to, it's such a small part of it. I'm going to keep it low res like this. Can't this, that's just, I'm not going to do anything. All that's going to happen is we're going to come sculpt in 
we'll sculpt in these lines and they're just texture projections will be fine. And then the next hard part will be the gloves. That's going to be very hard. I'm not really even sure how the hell I'm going to do this. So this might be a little bit of a dance back and forth between ZBrush because I to auto remesh it, or I might take, uh, I might try to hand retopple these gloves like the MetaHuman hand is done, which I've never recreated the meta MetaHuman hand topology myself. Uh, that's that's the kind of stuff I stay away from just like this. Not that this is the MetaHuman topology anymore, but like I kind of stay away from hands and I kind of stay away from faces because that's, you know, that's that's a lot. But uh, this pretty straightforward. Just got to do it. We're going to up-res, model in a little bit more stuff, do the belt, do the other, other crossy belt here. Where is it? Over this one. This one's even easier. It's just one piece of leather. There's no inside belt inside of it. Easy. Um, so this, we'll do these belt ones tomorrow. That's like a nice bit of warm up. Into this one, a little bit more advanced. And then struggle bus through this one pretty hard. This is going to be awful for me. Um, but I'll try to sort out some sort of topology that will do okay. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Never mind. Never mind. We're going. To, we're. I, I'm. I keep going. To, when I'm in Maya, I'm like, we have to end up with like deforming game mesh. We're going high poly. Never mind. We're just gonna get this thing ready for high poly. That should be fine. Um, we'll probably do some of these strap breakups again in in Maya, where it's a little easier. We're just gonna quadra over this. Never mind. These are gonna be easy, and then we're gonna add these little uh, brass knuckle situations. Never mind. Gloves are fine. Um, you can even imply seams in the low poly, but it, 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 you don't really have to. So we're gonna high poly, basically, well, basically high poly the, and thicken like the whole upper body tomorrow. Probably will take the whole day. And then down here, the legs are really quite easy. Um, I kind of don't think we're gonna get to it. Optional crotch pad, I might just not do that one. But again, this is just all ZBrush. There's no actual need to you could maybe model in that fold uh, and then get this sectioned up, right? So this has a strap that goes around it. We'll put those X's in there in Maya, strap in Maya. There's a belt buckle going around and we'll clean up the sole and we'll basically actually model out the shoe or the boot. Uh, this is going to just be a texture projection on like a swimsuit basically. And then the gloves and then the swords and that's it. Uh, and then we bring it into ZBrush sculpt in some details then we bring it into substance painter and then we come back here retopo certain parts if we need to and uh go through some skinning stuff i might need to get ng skin tools though this is why vampires do not appear in mirrors sacrifice many polygon faces for their powers hmm i'm excited to slay the powers of darkness and sinitracer too I don't know where you're going with this, but that's cool. Look forward to the motion builder stuff. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That's it for you with the chucks, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of like, you know, I don't want like naked metahuman anymore. Though he served his purpose of, uh, we had a couple things we had to sort out in while he was like, you know, where you could see every part of him deforming. But um, yeah, moving on, I want something, I want like a consistent skin for him in clothes that's not the generic metahuman clothing. Um, so uh, this is the one I want to get like as, as close to production level as I can is, uh, is this one. But then I'll be going back into like mocap world once this is all skinned up and nice. And there's a chance that like certain parts of the skinning I can't do. And so then I'll beg Epic for help. <laughs> I'm like, hey, here's this mesh real quick. Uh, you guys skin this for me? Or more importantly, teach me how you would skin something like this. Um, because I, I do anticipate certain issues of uh, this, for instance. Like if you look at the in-game mesh, if you watch Geralt in the game and you look at this, it gets really weird. Because, like, this is static, but this moves, and it's not a cloth simulation. So you kind of see this thing go, like, kind of in weird angles uh, when his shoulder moves. And there's a couple other areas like that, too. And this is going to intersect through here in certain points. And, uh, you know, for a, a game mesh, we'll, we'll, we'll just try to minimize that by design. Like, how we design the pieces to kind of stop that. But it's going to happen, meaning, like, uh, this. Like... As his shoulder comes up, this needs to react, right? 
So there's going to be some challenges of rigging these straps, uh, which is again why I'm here. I'm here for that though. I kind of want to, I want to see those challenges and attempt them. Where just like raw, just like having it stretch. I mean, that's what we kind of have to do. But we're going to be deep in the weight painting tool. I've I've been watching a couple of videos on techniques of doing stuff like this. It's a it's a pain in the ass. It's a straight pain in the ass. It's like you put the flood value to like. Uh, 0 0.05 and then you select a roll of verts flood click a bone flood kick a click a bone flood grab another roll of verts select the other bone flood switch to bone flood flood so you're basically like a hand painting you're like hand select flooding gradients down like the strap for everything for like a lot of part at least the upper body for the legs it's not so bad but like this is signing up for pain these these being actual mesh is like all just literally going to be painting for, for a long time uh, these are going to get hard bound these aren't going to move but it's basically this this area here is going to be kind of a problem this area same similar I modeled this pretty tight to the inner so any weighting that happens for, uh, on the chest from the upper arm we just nullify um, the belts always have issues but again and but the, this should be fine because we didn't do uh we didn't do marvelous, so we have like perfect symmetrical through here. So I have a I have a technique I'm gonna try to do perfect leg weighting for symmetrical meshes here, and then the feet shouldn't be any problem. So it's it's really gonna be like this is gonna, it's gonna be the main area in here here, and it's asymmetrical, so I got to do it both times. Oh, and then this this thing, and the thing is I won't really even I won't really like fully know if I've like destroyed the rigging skinning. Is there something in here? Well, we're gonna retop with this probably. There's clearly like two meshes in here. Something's weird. Um, but we'll we'll concern ourselves with the high poly first. We're gonna have to retop with that very specifically. And we are using new metahuman, so I will try to do the skin it skin it the new way, which is all helper bones for the fingers. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this dude. Uh, even though if it's worth like making this one. I mean, like most of the most of the work has been done is like right here, but I kind of like showing the whole character. I'll do both. Let's really spend time getting the screenshot right, right here. Mode window. I like it. This is uh, encouraging to be able to finish it like this. I can't. I can't get it like looking like that. In uh, in ZBrush. I tried. I could try again later, but I got to start producing clothes soon. Production quality, if possible. I think after I do this Witcher one, I'm ready to do like a suit. Suit's easier. There's not like all these shoulder pads and shit, but I wanted to start with like kind of a hard one. Suit should be pretty damn easy, and like the tie and the buttons, and like I mean, you have the button, like the zippers and all that shit, and in and uh, marvelous, they're cute, but they're not production ready. You just strip them all out and you remodel them anyway, and they fuck up all the auto topologies and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, never mind. I'll just do it right here. Screw the, like there's a, like all that stuff is like it's like a it's like a I don't know what it's not helpful. It's like cute. It's like a cute trick, but it doesn't actually you can't actually bring it into a game after. So very very sad after trying to do that. And it doesn't go into ZBrush very nicely either without this like quad pass. And if you watch flip normals, they basically like, yeah, you do some marvelous shit. And then you come into Maya, retopologize it, and then send it to ZBrush. So just skip it completely. Unless it's like a code or something. Okay. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to finish. I think we could probably maybe finish up the whole model, but at least the upper body. And then if not, one more day of uh, sub D modeling. One day ZBrush. Probably a day of retopo, and then another day of textures, and then another day of rigging, if everything goes well. So that'll, that'll be it. Okay, I'll be back. Peace.